session number 40! 40! Of Outlander's Catalidaria! Hi everyone! Hey. Session 40! 40! 40 is many sessions. It's many years. We've outlived 90% of GMB campaigns. Damn. <laughs> oh, wow. Probably more than that. Probably more. <laughs> yeah. What What does the number 40 make you think of? 40? 40? 50? <laughs> Closer than 10. <laughs> 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 I don't know what's going on anymore. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, we're here, and amazingly, we have also a complete number of players, which is Crazy. wonderful and hasn't been happening in a while. Hopefully, we are back to at least being the norm. Not quite yet. <sighs> Someday. Soon. Soon. But yeah, uh, I am going to pass the microphone microphone to Matt. Uh, why don't you tell us what happened last session? Okay, so when I did my recap thing, uh, I did the whole recap and then understandably, I have not had time to curate it, so it is a little wildly long, so I might expedite and skip sentences and speak really quickly at times. Hopefully that's Unforgivable. okay. I've never done it. anything like this. Okay. <laughs> so I'm just gonna go, uh, and if I pause, it's me speed reading and skipping stuff. Okay, so uh, we started the last session with Brooke seemingly reuniting with an old furbog friend from the war uh, before his days as a phantom. And they reminisce about uh, old and lost friends and they speak of their different paths with him choosing to leave the fighting behind and choose a life of healing and Brooke instead becoming a mercenary and traveling with a new band of friends, us. Uh, the conversation is friendly throughout and Brooke invites his friend to meet the party in the evening at the Dragon Wagon. Uh, we then cut over to Pontifex, who's looking to sign up for the Erdova Wizarding Competition, and he finds an application stand with an hour to spare, which is ran by a fan of his, asking for his autograph. Uh, after some short banter, the application fee is brought up and shortly interrupted by Shalira Eredova, uh, an old acquaintance of Pontifex's, and there's a palpable tension in the air between them. Uh, Pontifex turns down her charity of free admission, which she eventually relents on, and Pontifex is signed up for the tourney. Uh, they go their separate ways, and then we cut to Pip, who's looking to buy exactly three stones or gems from a vendor, no more, no less. Uh, <laughs> Tekka is off, searching for an individual with blue hair, and is approached by an Itar Philly man who seems to recognize Tekka by name. Uh, Tekka is noticeably taken aback, watches him cautiously while the man gives him an envelope that has been apparently been passed through several hands and a beak to reach Tekka. Uh, the man claims to know nothing about it, just that he's delivering it out of honor, quote-unquote. Uh, there's a cryptic exchange regarding do the birds dance and do the rivers still flow, which is met by at least we are allowed to live, whatever all of that means. Uh, the man who tells Tech his name is, uh, I, I wrote it, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, Iri? Ire? E-Y-R-E -E is what I put. Eerie? Ire, there you go. Uh, and he's clearly uncomfortable and he makes his leave and he makes a comment about, I hope we never meet again. Uh, Tekka reads the letter in the envelope and it's a letter from his mother. Uh, it explains her grief regarding the journey he's on and the journey he's chosen to take, but she emphasizes her respect and admiration for his freedom. And then she expresses the trust of his father and the love that they still have for him. Uh, we then cut back to Pontifex, who uh, was trying to find a secluded spot to use his new wand uh, to try to shapeshift into a flying creature to scout out the floating arena. Uh, he elects to turn into a red beak because we've been seeing him flying over the city and as the spell takes hold, he's a lot taller than he thought he should be. Uh, instead of feathers and winged arms, he's covered in gleaming blue scales and giant wings sprouting from his back. Uh, and checking his reflection in the window, he has become a sapphire gem dragon. Uh, and it seems to have like altered his mental state where he's just overcome with a uh, extreme sense of majesty and pride, and he just walks out into the city, uh, scaring everyone away, and the locals are all screaming and running in fear. 
Uh, and then he flies into the sky and lands on the floating wizarding arena to check it out. Uh, he flips some boxes and finds some pipes and he's satisfied and then goes to leave for the surface. Uh, and then almost as if called, he's instead compelled to fly higher into the sky, far beyond the clouds, where he finds a group of floating land masses complete with trees and water and other gem dragons. Um, passing by the other dragons, not really seeming to mind his presence, he continues to a particular set of floating islands where he finds a large metal cage sized just for him. Uh, he instinctively enters the cage and shuts the door behind himself, hearing it lock as a man stands outside the cage, and I recognize them. Uh, he's a tall, almost white skin with painted box, and it's the Yvelsi that uh, we traded the mask for the wand. Uh, after a kind of snap back to reality, he shouldn't be in the cage, uh, freaks out, tries to breath weapon, won't work. Uh, the man speaks, but I can't understand him. And then suddenly Pontifex can't breathe, has a panic attack, and then vomits the wand and his prism uh, onto the floor. The guy takes them, he points the wand at Pontifex and reverts him back to his normal old frog self. Uh, the Velsi reveals the mask that was traded to him, which he shaped to look like Pontifex, which I think means that he was scrying on Pontifex the whole time, uh, and then threw it off into the distance. Uh, and then he cleans off one of his painted vox, and it reveals it to be a prismatic gemstone. Uh, this is recognized to be the Lord of the Sky, uh, but no conversation can be had. He jumps off the edge of the floating things, turns into a massive white gem dragon, uh, bigger than any we've ever seen, and then flies off into the distance, leaving me in the cage. Uh, a smaller dragon picks up Pontifex in the cage and brings him back down to Earth. And then cutting back to Pip, who's in Simulalon, he's freaking out, searching for Pontifex, because uh, the city is losing their minds about the dragons. Uh, he sees the purple dragon fly south of the city and then uh, return back to the sky. Uh, Pontifex is safely, quote-unquote, on the ground outside the city, inside of a cage, where he's basically in the fetal position and crying, uh, where Tekka finds him and frees him and figures out something's wrong. Uh, Tekka leads the old man back to the inn in the city where they're reunited with the whole group. Brook's friend, uh, sensing the tension, leaves to the goat boat, the superior inn. Uh, Pontifex tells the party about what happened, has an emotional breakdown, uh, with Pip trying to comfort him with a gift of a letter opener and also writes him a very cute letter. Uh, after a very long encouragement session, Pip manages to convince the professor to learn how to summon his cat and they retire for the room. Uh, after they leave, everyone else discusses the possibilities of the cage messing with the professor's mind and that the story was too far-fetched to actually have happened. Uh, and that someone had tracked down the, the professor, trapped him in the magical cage uh, and hallucinations, and then stolen his wand and prism. Uh, Tekka comes up with a plan to discuss with the professor the next day, and Brooke tells him of his friend and how they met and his friend's new affiliation as a cleric of the snake. Uh, back in the inn, Pip is trying to teach Pontifex how to summon the cat, and it doesn't work. Uh, they make a small amount of progress before both getting frustrated, both arguing, and both separating, as they always do. Uh, in the night, Pip awakens at the dream tree and runs into Viz. Uh, they had a friendly little talk, and Viz uh, excitedly explains to Pip that he could come to the dream tree every night if he wanted to, because he is not like other people. He's made of dreams. Not entirely like Viz, but mostly. Uh, Pip doesn't understand how he can be made of dreams, and Viz fails to explain, and then they both forget about it and move on. Uh... <laughs> They then both hop onto the back of a pink Pegasus unicorn, naturally, uh, and Pip asks if they can go above the clouds to the place that Pontifex talked about with all the dragons. Viz says that they can't fly above the clouds because that's just how the world works. Uh, the sky, the dreams, and the sea are separate, and they have to stay that way with the humans staying on the ground, or with people staying on the ground. Uh, Viz mentions that Pip's friend came over asking how to find him. Viz describes Pip's friend as a tall individual with red vox looking like gemstones, specifically like rubies. Uh, and after a little bit, Pip remembers the ruby lycanthrope that swore to kill us, and he asks Viz to turn him away the next time he sees him. Uh, Viz explains that he told the stranger how to find the thing that will help him find Pip, or whatever that is. 
And then when Pip asks him to show him where, he is brought to a nighttime grassy field speckled with trees where a cloaked man is shivering over a campfire uh, who is suddenly startled by something falling next to him. And it's the mask, uh, perfectly resembling Pontifex's face. And that was it. Awesome. Lengthy recap, sorry. Well, well done. Yeah. No, it was good. It was detailed. Thank you. Um, here's your inspiration. We're going to call it... Uh, Stress-spiration. Um, mo <laughs> moved inspiration. Perfect. Because it's incredible that you even managed to be here today. Oh my gosh. You have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. In that case, uh, everything is ready for me to bring back the map of Similialon for what may be the last time ever. It's not about to destroy it. What? Oh, okay. Yeah, I seventy mean, that makes dragons. Sense. It's a tournament arc. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There has to be some sort of cataclysm that interrupts the final battle. <laughs> hmm. So anyway... <laughs> That's just anime. Um, we can resume uh, the session. Uh, TC is the following morning. Um... With Pip being the one who wakes up uh, slightly earlier than everybody else, uh, suddenly uh, the, the loud thud of the mask hitting the ground and the realization of what of, of who that mask looked like and what it meant for that particular person to have just found it, it, it just jolts you awake, Pip. Um. Hey, everybody wake up, we got a problem. Uh, what now? <laughs> just I got out like of the it's... dream world, and it looks like we got a friend of ours that just got a hold of something that's going to make our whole lives a lot harder. Can it Fessor, even get harder? Didn't you say... Didn't you say that, uh, that dragon guy, he had that, that mask, right? The stone mask? Yes, the one that we traded for the wand. And he carved your face with it, didn't he? It looks just like me. Um, well, I think that Krelko that we made really angry now has it. <sighs> oh. Could you see where he was? He's close. He, he's really close. I don't know how close, but... But pretty close. Uh, well, what do we do? Do we well, just... Better, wait for him? Well, we should at least prepare. I'm pretty sure some of us wanted to talk to him and see if that works, right? Otherwise... I mean, if it helps, I still have a few of his dead wife's teeth. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh... well, maybe. Uh... Hey, I, I was, I was thinking, um. I I feel really bad about you know his dead wife and kids. Um, do you think that that cleric could bring them back to life? Uh, are you asking about Brooks' friend or about uh... the the one we saw bring everyone back to life here? Well, the arch would I would I know if that was within your capabilities? 
DM? Um, roll an arcana check. You are aware of the fact that uh, um, the kind of magic that can bring people back to life is uh, um, almost almost unique. Um, almost uh, that it's powerful enough that very, very few people, very few clerics, uh, mainly the arch clerics, are able to do it. And there's very various levels of it. And the longer an individual has been dead, the harder it is. Uh, uh, to bring them back. And you know that there is certain other limitations, such as uh, uh, generally you need the body of the person you're trying to return. Uh, so in terms of whether Baryon Thar specifically could do it, you've seen him bring back to life people who had been dead for a day and with their bodies available. So... And I have no reason to know that Baryon Thar has any more capability in that what he did was already miraculous um it's difficult to imagine that uh, something even more incredible than incredible than that could be done but if anyone in the world could do it it would probably be an arch cleric Orianthor, that's... I suppose it could be worth asking. But, I uh... mean, it's the right thing to do, right? It depends on how they say things. I don't see how it could be wrong. Well, you saw it here in town. Even some relatives of the ones who fell. Due to... You know, what happened. It always depends on what the Krolko actually believes and happens after... Someone's some, death. Some might view the boundary between life and death as... Sacred. Not to be meddled with. Even within the Jade Alliance. Well, then he shouldn't meddle with it by killing us. Mm. Huh. I suppose. I could ask. I could, uh, write a letter. Wait, is he still in town? He's still in town, isn't he? Uh, to your knowledge? We could ask. I think at the same time we should also prepare a place where if talking goes wrong can at least await him so we don't get surprised to attack. Yeah, if there was ever a time to sleep with an eye open, it's now. You know, if I still had my wand, I could probably just deal with it. I believe you, but that uh, isn't really an option right now, right? It is a cruel way of saying it, but it is true. <laughs> is there any way we can keep track of him now that you found him once, Pip? No, it wasn't um, a dream, but still. Maybe... Maybe Viz can show him to me each night. I... Apparently I can go there whenever I want. Professor, you're the one that's... Uncovered the magic of this mask. You know its capabilities, correct? Who? He can see through your eyes. 
Okay. Is that Presumably. All do? Does he hear what we're saying? I, I don't fully recall the extent of what it could do, but generally, scrying magic allows you to either find their sense, like their location, like just tracking, or to experience their senses. The mask seems relatively uh, specialized, so I would assume uh, they can simply experience my senses, so yes. But the mask then, didn't have ears. Perhaps he should be excluded from this discussion. Oh. Uh, no, that is that is logical. Okay. I'm going to go, uh, I guess, prepare for stuff. Maybe I have mail. <laughs> He's gonna just leave, walk outside. It's <laughs> oh. <laughs> like dragging his feet, like pauses, like looks over his shoulder, make sure that no one's gonna stop him. <laughs> And it continues. So just like staring, Bloody waiting eyes. for him to walk out the door. It's the, plays the walking away music from the end of Incredible Hulk. He, it t tell <laughs> tell you what, Matt. R roll a d100. <laughs> Do you have mail? N let's see if you have a rumor. Seventy-one. Seventy-one. 71? 71. Is that the threshold? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. You got the golden rumor. Oh, hey, look, he mailed me back my wand. Tell no, your wand <laughs> off. <laughs> Incredible. Oh, oh no. One off. Are you Wait, I'm what? <laughs> Say it again. You're one off. Oh, no. 72. <laughs> but hey, next time you roll, you're guaranteed to have a rumor. So tomorrow. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's fine. This is typical for lately. <laughs> Pontifex, you have no mail. Oh. <laughs> when a male bird passes by and is like, oh, I think I have something for. Oh, nope, not you. <laughs> not you. <laughs> Look. There's only one of him, and he didn't seem keen to fight us face to face before. Now he has the perfect advantage. It's pretty clear he's going to be looking for an opportune moment to ambush us. And I don't see any way for us to change that. But if he gets his family back, won't, wouldn't, wouldn't he forgive us? Probably. I'm not even sure if that's possible, Pip. I, I've only been gone from home for a couple of months, and I've already seen like a hundred impossible things. So why not? As I say, we can try to make the preparation in case it's even possible, but there is a high chance that it might not be possible. In that case, we're probably out of arguments. And... We'll never know when he's coming, but we can never let our guard down. Exactly, that's why we would use Pip's ability to see it in, a, in the dream, so that works, right? Yeah, I, I should be able to. 
Viz said I was m made of dreams? So you're saying that we can't hide, but we can run? <laughs> but we could also go towards them. Again, you can always see us coming. If he wants us dead, he'll wait until he knows he can kill us. There's not going to be a fair fight. But he can only see out of Pontifex's eyes, right? That's true. So what if... What if we use that to our advantage? Well, Had him see like something it. through Pontifex. But it's actually like a, a trap or something. It'd work, but we'd have to light a Pontifex too. We couldn't leave any chance of him finding out the ruse. In any case, he probably wouldn't do anything while we were in town. It just doesn't seem reasonable, right? At least not in the crowded areas. Since he can transform. Well, I guess that means that before everything is done here, before we leave, we need a strategy. I guess that's all there is to say for now. I will prepare traps around our encampment when we are on the road. Yeah, that's probably smart. Okay, again, not a word to Pontifex. No. Okay. Okay. Um, Pontifex, with you being downstairs, uh, um, Kailu approaches you and uh, tells you that there is a message for, for Talix and just puts a piece of paper in your hand. I think he hears, there's a message, and holds a piece of paper, and he starts to like, glow a little <laughs> bit, and then for Talax, then he's <laughs> it never ends. <laughs> okay. I will deliver it to him when they are done. I think we join him downstairs mm -hmm. after our little powwow. Yeah. Uh, you're all downstairs, you're getting breakfast. Pontifex is sad. So, uh, excited for the big tournament? Oh, me? Huh. Oh, Talix, I barely remember what excitement feels like. This is for you, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> <laughs> You have mail. Oh, uh, okay. Must Take be nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, uh, Talix, this is a this is a, re a request for uh, your trend <laughs> for your translating services to be offered today. Um. You're, you are, um, uh, it, it, you're, you're not forced to take it, but basically it's a request for you to translate for Vadra during the tournament. Oh. Uh, it involves basically you being there with her through all stages of the tournament for as long as she is uh, uh, still in it. 
and uh, um, you are asked not to assist her in the various trials. Wait, but, I'm going to be in the battlefield? <laughs> um, but to translate for her <laughs> she all says, announcements Ow. and rules. <laughs> oh, okay, to, like, to convey things to her. To okay. her. <laughs> she all says right. out. <laughs> um, all right. Sure. Yeah. Alex will, <laughs> she says ow. will take that up. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Look, I'll be in there with you. In my own way. Oh. Is that exciting? Yeah, hell nice. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna go get ready for the day. I'm going to wait. I'll just pat him on the head. <laughs> you feel like a weird... I don't think you've ever touched his head. You feel the weird texture of the scarring under the hood. <laughs> it's like wood grain. Um, <laughs> does anyone need to do anything this morning? Uh, if we are having, like, breakfast together in the tavern, um, Tech will probably have a quick conversation with Pontifex throughout that meal. Um, hmm. Teacher, I understand this is difficult. But you must fight. Do not give up. I have one idea for today. For the tournament? Right. Tekka, you are no wizard. You cannot participate. That is silly. That was never the goal. No, you, teacher, you will be in the tournament. And when you win the tournament, deny the rewards you'll be offered. Then make a claim. Ask for their assistance up to the clouds. If this is so important to you, then you can convince them. Your accolades will drive you there. For under torrents of rain, the scallop will cling to hoe, and only the bumblebee can know the flower's true color. Uh. Wait, am I the scallop or the bee? Magic is your home. You know it. You can hone it. I see. Ateka, I imagine if they could go that high, they would have, and they would know of this place. Then challenge them. If they believe it not possible, challenge them to make it so. If dragons can't go there, why not us? Well, as one who has recently experienced dragonhood, it is a very long list, but I understand what you are saying. Okay. If I win, I will turn down the rewards. You will have your gift back. I hope so. 
I mean, the wand would be nice, but... But the prism, that is mine. I want it back. Then show us today. Okay, sure. Uh, yes, yes, you're right. Uh, I, I, I must prepare. I need supplies. Uh, I, I will go. Thank you. And he's just gonna like excuse himself from the conversation. <laughs> And he's gonna head out to the town. He's looking to buy cat food. <laughs> huh. Okay. <clears throat> uh, yeah, Tekka would probably head out to buy ropes. Okay. Uh, let's make it easy for Matt and say that uh, uh, cat food, uh, it's like the price of rations. Um, are you going for like fresh fish? The most good premium stuff? cat food that he can find, but yeah. that is explicitly cat food. Yeah, yeah. Uh, then we're going with the price of rations. Okay. Uh, and you know, per day amount. Uh, and is uh, Tekka going for premium rope as well? No, I don't think so. Okay, uh, in which case, uh, th then we're going with the price of uh, hemp and rope, which is one gold for 50 feet. Mm-hmm. Anything else from anyone? Oh, I please. Hold on a second. Um... This applies to both of you. Uh, so you both get a 50% discount. Um, as people, uh, those that you interact with, the merchants you interact with to buy those items, uh, they recognize you as uh, the heroes that saved the Simlielon a while back. Uh, who do? Uh, the the, peop the merchants you're buying these things from, the cat food and the, mm. the rope, um, they they recognize you as the hero as, as the heroes of Sim Leon and they give you a fifty percent discount. Oh. So the price of rations, but half. Okay, he's gonna buy four of them. Okay. Uh, is everyone else uh, good? Anything that needs to be done? I have a question. Let's hear it. I don't know what ingredients I have yet, but well, Pip you would like to make. Well, you haven't messaged me. I did, and you said no. You, you said didn't. you couldn't do you it. You did now. right before the session. <laughs> I need to be told, like at some point during the week. Anyway, I want to know, even if it's something that Pip could like get in town, he needs some fire peas. Could he get I don't some know. fire peas? <laughs> I don't know. What is a fire pea? I have no one else to ask. <laughs> they're, they're like wasabi peas. Okay, the answer is absolutely not. Okay. Uh, nobody... <laughs> I'm not even going to make a roll for it. Nobody knows what you're talking about here in Simli alone. You know, fire peas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now that you've repeated yourself, now I get it. <laughs> Still no. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Uh, 
this means that the... Well, are, are we ready to move on to the tournament itself? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, in the same manner that uh, um, the people of Simleon access their flying towers, in the same manner that you have experienced uh, um, how to access the, the Fount of Knowledge, um, you see throughout the day people flying up to the arena. Uh, there are designated spaces all around, all uh, beneath the arena, where uh, if you were to approach and to stand still uh, and uh, express in your mind the, the idea, the desire to head upward, um, you would be greeted with a staircase of light uh, spreading all the way down in a spiral towards you and then gently pulling you upward. And you see, you see people throughout the day heading up, sometimes some coming down, but the majority heading up. In addition to the arena itself, uh, uh, you see other constructions near and around it that are shaped sort of like rings. Um, really, really large rings. And those two are floating uh, centered around the arena, but spinning gently uh, <clears throat> along, uh, <clears throat> along multiple axes. And uh, from the ground, you can tell that that's where people are seated. That's where the majority of, of the crowd is going to be to actually watch the tournament take place. Um, it soon comes to, to, to your attention and to your understanding that for those of you uh, who are not the participants in the tournament, uh, that there is a fee to actually watch it. But it, that appears to be uh, entirely waived for the heroes of Simlielon that saved the colony recently. Uh, so you don't have to pay, and in, in, instead you are given some of the best uh, uh, available seats. Uh, Talix, you <clears throat> are whisked away, uh, along with Pontifex, to go where the participants of the tournament uh, are heading. Um, as you reach the floating arena, and then you're taken to sort of like side uh, rooms, the majority of people here, the majority of the contestants appear, appear to be elves. Um, most of them uh, um, somewhat advanced uh, in age. Um, uh, and, and Talix, you are, you are taken to meet uh, uh, Vajra and it quickly becomes apparent that uh, uh, it wasn't her idea to have you translate for her. Um, she tells you that there was someone else who was supposed to do it, but then her her grandpa thought that since you were in town and you guys already knew each other and you had already proven to know their language uh, so thoroughly, that it would be a great idea if uh, uh, if if you got to do it. Uh, but she she doesn't seem particularly happy that you did take the job. Uh, Pontifex, when you show up, you are um, you. you you're, you quickly come to the realization that there were supposed to be these uh, uh, these trials yesterday um, that were meant to um, that that they were supposed to take place to to already call out some of the uh, some of the participants. Uh, um, the the guy you had talked to when you had signed up for the tournament said that with you it was basically going to be a formality that you were gonna uh, beat them uh, for sure. But like things happened yesterday and you kind of forgot about all that. <laughs> um, but it seems that despite you not not failing but straight up missing. Um, not even showing up for this, it seems like you have still been included I I in the roster. Uh, yeah, and you're, you're still uh, one of the participants, and uh, you imagine that this has to do either with um, you just being automatically accepted for, for being one of the, the heroes of Similielon, or um, uh, 
Well, you wonder if perhaps somebody had a hand in this, but... Um, all you know is that you're in. The most confident move you can possibly make is to just not even go to the qualifier. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's normal for, like, celebrity participants, celebrity athletes, to not have to do the qualifier, right? We already know what like they I'm can do. Like, I'm already seated, I get to skip You're points. already a legend, yeah. Pretty good. <clears throat> no, he's gonna assume that she messed with it. And he's probably gonna be real upset about it, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, of course I'm only allowed in because she allows me to be. I can't do anything myself. <laughs> no, this is not what Tekka said. He said I am the best. Basically. <laughs> um... Alex, when when Vadra asks for a few details about what a tournament is actually going to to be about and what she'll be expected to do, uh, I have no idea. You have no idea. I can't <laughs> wait to find out. I'm very excited to see all this. <laughs> um, when the when the time for the tournament to to begin finally approaches. Um, it isn't just the governor, uh, Murthelia and Umeren, who, uh, in, who introduces uh, the, the tournament, but it appears that uh, along with him, there is a sort of, sort of like a guest of honor, uh, that is Barry and Thar, um, who also, uh, alongside the, the governor, uh, introduces the, uh, the tournament, and they both give a little speech. Uh, uh, and, and you're struck by how how unusual uh, it is for for the for the arch cleric to be here and to be taking part in this uh, in this elven uh, tradition and and event. Um, and his presence on the peninsula, uh, just for him being an arch cleric, was itself. Uh, uh, shocking, but the fact that it's the arch cleric of the fairy dragon, uh, the one god that uh, uh, represents uh, magic, uh, it, it feels appropriate, uh, almost like it, it had to be him, like he was bound to go this way. Now, uh, those of you in in the crowd watching the actual tournament, it seems that. The oh, actually, uh, let's make this an insight check from Brooke, Pip, and Tekka. Twenty two. Okay. Um. Brooke, this is in something that in part you, you're not just noticing now, but you've been picking up on this little by bit, um, day by day. Uh, your time spent in the dragon wagon, uh, speaking with Kailu, um, and just being, being your observant self. Um, Back when Baryon Thar had first uh, uh, had resurrected some elves, you remember uh, one of the one of them standing up to him and asking that a relative uh, be not brought back, and you, you you're kind of putting together that there is this resistance against uh, Baryon Thar, that there is a lot of elves in the in the colony who seem unhappy with his presence, unhappy with the miracles he has performed and unhappy today that he is here and he is involved uh, in the tournament and he's put on them he's such a uh, such an important part uh, of it to the point where uh, he's alongside the governor uh, introducing the actual games um, you, under you know that particularly elves who, are, uh, who, lead, uh, who lead such long lives that uh, many of them have yet to move past the uh, 
the horrors of the war. Um, and there's just many that seem to not be ready to have an arch cleric be here for this. Um, the tournament is introduced as a series of, uh, of challenges um, that will ultimately lead up to, to um, actual battles between those who, who pass those challenges. Uh, and it is partially not just a contest of abilities, but also of, of endurance, uh, as all these tests will take place throughout uh, uh, a single day. And the first one, when the participants are, are introduced, um, <clears throat> more than, more than uh, uh, a race, more than a contest, uh, it's more about just showing uh, off, showing what you can do. <clears throat> Names are called one by one and uh, every wizard, every spellcaster that steps forward, they, uh, they do a little something to impress the crowd. Um, so, what would Pontifex like to do when he is introduced? I think he's like watching the other people show off their stuff. Like, is, is there like some examples of uh, <clears throat> things that others yeah. have done? Uh, let's start with a let's start with a perception check. Okay. Uh, also, apparently, I have music, but I don't remember it. Oh, it's cute. Yeah, sure. Let's go with this. <laughs> oh, Pontifex! <Nailed> <laughs> you earned something. Call off better. <laughs> I actually love that Jason called it. You failed to see them show off. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Pontifex, you're having a rough day. Ah, uh, you're no just. <laughs> uh, what happened yesterday has. Uh, you've been looking forward to this tournament for so long, and you've had all these ideas about uh, uh, what you were going to do in them, and the people you were going to defeat in the tournament, and whatever whatever challenges you were going to put in front of you, you felt like you could overcome them. And you had all this confidence, partially in yourself. You're, you're experienced, you're not just uh, somebody. Um, you are Professor Pontifex. And uh, you can do so many incredible things that nobody can even dream of, and there is nothing that you can that you can't possibly do. Uh, but all that confidence seemed to have left you with the loss of the wand and the loss of the prism. And by the time your name is called, you're not ready. You didn't know that it was time to go, and you just have to step out and and do something. Oh, I think he's like panicking. He's like, oh, what this impressive. Uh, uh, <laughs> he's like just standing there in the middle of the arena, like in the standing thinker pose, just not doing anything. <laughs> you, um, <laughs> on these, on these floating can rings I that, uh, yeah, I, on, on, on this. Shot? Yeah, 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 I'm getting there. On these floating, uh, on these floating rings where everybody is seated, um, you make eye contact with your three companions uh, that are in the crowd, that are in the, in the closest seats to the arena, um, and and to your to your right from the door you just came from, um, Talix is also there. Uh, so any of you, if you'd like, uh, you can tell me how you'd like to assist and. Uh, well, Jason, go right ahead. Well, I was just going to like call out and tell him to do something. Maybe, hopefully, having paid more attention, being very excited to learn about the tournament. Um. But again, do, have I seen any examples of what yes. they do? Yes. So the rest of you uh, have have watched uh, um, other people come by, and there was. Oh no. 
That's a phone. That's a phone call. It's a robot. Oh, okay. Ah, uh, we don't care about robots. Um, there was one. Um, so <clears throat> you've seen, <coughs> excuse me, various displays of magic. Uh, people doing things that uh, they they felt like were impressive enough uh, to. It, it, impress the crowd. Uh, you've seen a wizard summon lining all around him. Uh, you've seen another uh, enter the arena flying into a little somersault. Um, the one that has gotten the most positive and loudest reaction was this, um, this half-elven man um, who looked the least like a wizard compared to everybody who had come before him um and uh, he he didn't even have a, a a wand or a staff or a crystal but instead he had walked in with with a musical instrument with a lute and what he did was to create this enormous a, enormous illusion of a wolf that hopped around the 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 arena um, and the size of it, and the fact that it was sparkling with light, and all of you just like it really got your attention, snap into it because they, you just saw this wolf, uh, which is like this uh, concept you've been thinking about a lot lately in your in your uh, in your travels. Um, everybody was delighted with it, and he, he even like sang a little song to actually cast a spell. Um, and th those of you seated in. Uh, uh, among the crowd, I've noticed that also a lot of girls kind of swooning over him. He's admittedly kind of pretty handsome. Uh, and it seemed like his charm immediately won, him, uh, won uh, a lot of the crowd over. Oh no, he doesn't stand a chance. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> the professor can't compete with someone that hot. <laughs> um... Oh, Talix, you're a genius. Oh. Play the pity card. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when Pontifex Professor, himself just was in... Try dropping the base. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only thing I know that he can do. <laughs> <laughs> I can make a bleating noise. <laughs> it hurts. <laughs> and make, rusts. Things. Use your dubstep. Okay, I mean, is anyone else gonna say anything? Um, so what I am going... What we're going to do for the tournament is that in between the rounds, uh, your companions each get one chance to assist with the following round. So this oh God. is Talix's chance to help. Uh, so on whatever next check you attempt to do, you'll have advantage on it. Uh, uh, I'm just gonna call I think him, he's like, like, uh, they... thinking about his dubs, uh, and then <laughs> realizes that big. he can't do it anymore. No, oh, no. <laughs> Something big, big, Professor. Ah, uh, dubstep, uh, the wubs, and the squirrelix, oh, uh, big, big. big, it's like a big, everyone arms. loves this big. one, uh, <laughs> and he's gonna try to make his dubstep sphere, the, you know, the, the usual flaming sphere of wub wub thunder, uh, and he, like, forms it, but it's, like, in his hands, uh, and it's really small, uh, and it's like a low, like, humming sound, and then it gets, like, louder, and the orb gets, like, bigger and bigger and bigger until it is, like, he's holding it up above his head, like, spirit bomb style, and it's, like, uh, <laughs> like 40 feet in diameter, just this gigantic orb of just, like, vibrating thunder, uh, and then he just throws it, like, I don't know, a good 70, 80 feet up into the air, and it just explodes. Uh, I'm casting <laughs> Fireball, but converting it to Thunder damage. Okay. To cast Thunderball. All right. Um, spend your spells a lot. Um, yeah. you, so, roll a performance check with advantage, and you add the level of the spell you have just cast to your roll. So, <laughs> so you just cast a normal Fireball, right? So it's, it would be level three. So, so uh, performance plus performance three, plus three with advantage. advantage. That's a plus three with advantage. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> wow. 
Wow! You know there's like other roles you can do between 1 and 20? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this is the first time he's ever cast Fireball. <laughs> nice. Uh, he, ju he just figured it out. He's like, oh yeah, the dub sphere, but they're like bigger, better, you, more. You pop uh, everyone's eardrums. <laughs> <laughs> uh, po Pontifex, the... Dub ball. You've seen plenty of students uh, walk up in front of the classroom uh, on, on a day of an exam, not having studies, being uh, studied, being overcome with anxiety. Uh, and like, that's how you felt until a moment ago. And, and Talix shakes you out of it. And remember, you're, you're not the uncertain, unwise student. You are the fucking professor, and you're going to show everyone here. Um, your your spell, it's something you've never tried before, but magic for you, it's just such, a, such an intrinsic part of your own persona that you can make this work, you can improvise, and improvise you do. Uh, the, the result is sort of like this this firework, but it doesn't go out with a single boom. Um, it's multiple smaller explosions, and they almost feel like almost feel like music, and everybody can feel the vibrations in their in their chest. Uh, and your you everybody's wowed with just the pure power of your of your spell washing over everybody. Um, and you like realize a frog croaking into a megaphone. <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, you didn't hear this because you were distracted, but the the rest of the party knows that that Pontifex kind of seems to be the f one of the favorites. Um, he is one of the better known names in the tournament, uh, not just for being one of the people who saved the colony just a few weeks ago, but also as basically the one of the main representatives of the College of Scribes uh, in the tournament itself, and uh, you all see Pontifex find himself uh, in this moment and show everybody what he's capable of. Yeah, uh, I think he sends a gigantic frog croaking explosion into the <laughs> sky and then has like a moment of like, yeah, that'll do. <laughs> <laughs> like all the dust on the ground below him is like, you know, blown away from the, the like, concussion of it. Yeah, that'll do. And then he's just going to like nonchalantly try to really downplay it like this is just a Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to just walk off and kind of like leave them with that. Like, this is the least I can do whenever this is <laughs> by far the most that he can do. You see one of the people that was supposed to be after you just quit on the spot. <laughs> um, a few more more names are called uh, until... until um... Talix, you hear uh, you hear Vajra being introduced, and you you translate for her uh, what is being said about her, uh, about how how proud and happy the people of uh, of Simlianon are to welcome um, a a Ledarian in this tournament, uh, um, and that they they've everybody's very excited to see what this this young girl can do. Um, you step out into the arena with Vajra, and it's this, um, it's this, for, you have none of the anxiety that most of the people, uh, here, here do, uh, cause you have no stakes in this, you just get to step in the middle of the arena and look out, and just enjoy, uh, the view, and being there, um, and you look back towards, uh, towards Vajra, uh, wondering what, uh, uh, she will do, and you let her know that it's her time uh, to impress everyone who is watching and uh, Vajra gives a bit a bit of a small shrug and she begins to sing and you've heard um, this kind of singing once before when the Etarava had welcomed you uh, amongst their people 
uh, their their song uh, sounded unlike any other kind of singing any of you had heard before uh, at times uh, sounding somewhat like the the sounds that their red beaks are capable of making and it's beautiful and a little a little jarring and some uh, um seem to be creeped out by this uh, others are just mildly interested um and no one is particularly impressed uh, um until the point when uh, vegetation begins to grow in the arena uh all around her and at your feet talix uh, beneath you there was just a dry dirt before but uh, vajra's singing brings plants uh to, to life. Uh, this tall grass takes both of you and grows so thick that it elevates both of you, uh, Vajra higher up than you. And the, the confused uh, and uncertain murmurs of the crowd are uh, silenced as, takes, as this takes place and Vajra's song uh, culminates in this enormous flower blooming beneath her feet. Um, she has put on a reasonable show and uh, um, the, the general feel uh, of the crowd afterwards seems to be that uh, she has done more than they had expected of someone this young when her song ends the, the plants slowly retract back into the ground until every sign of them has completely disappeared uh, Tell leaving... us going to try to collect a, a petal Oh, yes, absolutely. You, you snatch one of the petals. Hmm? Does it vanish? Uh, you snatch one of the petals from the giant flower that Vajo was standing on. Um, and the, the rest of the flower does. But a petal you have managed to grab, which is almost as... It's as long as your forearm. Uh, it stays in your hand. Talix practically dove for this thing. Yeah. He, he is beaming at, at the pedal and then at her. That was incredible. We're going to do very well. Okay. <laughs> Alright. Can't wait for next round. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, now, the the challenges uh, uh, that the tournament presents are, are many, uh, but we, we're only going to, like, we, as the DM and the players, are, are only going to explore some of them. Um, so as a brief description, a lot of them uh, uh, involve uh, tests of uh, magical prowess and sometimes uh, magical knowledge. Um, I'm, I'm going... Uh, oh, actually, not yet. Um, during a... <laughs> there's a quiz show segment. Uh, during one of the, the breaks uh, in between some of... Uh, uh, some of these challenges... Um, the... The rest of the party members are allowed to, um, so, uh, uh, sort of like a, um, a VIP kind of thing. You can go backstage, you can talk to the stars. Um, you have a chance in between rounds to go speak with Pontifex and see how he's doing, uh, and have a chat with also Talix and Vajra. Um, it appears <coughs> that the next challenge is going to be a treasure hunt um, that is going to take place. It's, it's, uh, uh, some some of these challenges take place outside of the arena and the treasure hunt is one of them um, how would you how would any of you any one of you uh, like to uh, help out Pontifex for the upcoming uh, challenge um, <clears throat> if the treasure hunt has been done in the past could I just listen to the crowds and see if anyone talks about how the past treasure hunts went and gather any information to pass along to Pontifex that could help them? Uh, let's make it a perception check for Brooke. 
Let's hope this actually gives you advantage. It be mm. do not. Oh wait. <laughs> oh, oh, oh 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 sorry, I misunderstood what you said. Um okay. Thirteen. This is uh, um you we come to understand that this is the first tournament of this type that takes place on Lidaria. Um but there have been plenty more. Uh, that uh, in, have been run in, in just in the Elven uh, country back in Elven Arden in general. Um, and you know that each tournament has its own set of challenges. Some are just straight up like spellcasting duels. Uh, some are uh, more of a like mixed tests like this one. Um, and treasure hunts are pretty common. And the one thing that you like pick up on for sure is that generally for 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 this kind of challenge, the um, the kind of magic that helps with locating things and creatures, um, which would be the most straightforward way of approaching such a challenge, they are always um, thought of, and there's always some manner of... Uh, uh, of precaution that's been taken so that those don't work and wizards have to be more creative than that uh, uh, to actually find what they're supposed to to look for all right and i would go into pontifex's room tent whatever it is <laughs> uh how confident are you feeling on the next challenge you've been doing quite well so far uh, I mean, I don't know. Suppose I've been doing uh, moderately well, so it should be okay. Why? <clears throat> I, mean, I don't. I didn't notice anyone else with any particular scavenging ability, save for the one that summoned all of the wolves. That might be something worth worrying over. Yeah. Um, if you want a tip from past tournament, every time there has been a treasure hunt, the normal ways of finding stuff, things through magic is usually sought of and potentially prevented. I'm not sure if all participants will know that, so you might have to get a bit creative. This knowledge could give you a few minutes if you think of something beforehand. Hmm. Uh, okay, yes, I'll, I'll ponder uh, non-magical ways to do it, I guess. Well, you have been with us outside, right? Uh, do what? But you have been with us on the road, and we have looked for things. <clears throat> Usually, if something is hidden, there is some marking around the area that leads to it, so keep an eye out for that. And those things can only be taken away with magic, I'm assuming. So you at least have some experience from our from our advantage, uh, adventures. Right. Well, I think... Uh... I don't know. I suppose I won't know what I will do until I'm in the moment. Uh, it's unlike me. I usually like to over-prepare, but uh, seems like they've uh, taken great lengths to work against that. Yeah, that's what I thought, that you would like to at least somewhat prepare. Just go through the past adventures in your mind and see what we did. Or try to remember what we did to find for example, the uh, what was his name? The silent one? The metal one? Oh, the one in the jungle. The one who stares? Yeah! <laughs> the staring one. <laughs> the staring one! <laughs> Who so many names? Anyways, break is almost over. Good luck, bye! <laughs> <laughs> okay. By the time the, uh, the the treasure hunt is about to begin, 
those uh, um, those rings uh, that have been floating uh, um, uh, around the arena uh, where, where the crowd is seated. They, they separate and they float uh, lower to the ground. Um, sometimes with the way they're, they're, they're spinning, uh, you feel like the the motion should be enough to make you uh, to make you guys feel sick, um, or even sometimes you're leaning forward a little bit uh, and you're worried you might fall off of your chairs. But at no point does gravity ever seem to apply properly to you, um, and you're always just comfortably seated. You never feel pulled um, one way or another, and it doesn't seem like there's any actual danger of falling off um <clears throat> Barrier and Thar um, announces to the crowd and to the participants that uh, um, the objective of the next challenge is to bring uh, is to find and bring to him the tooth of a golden wolf <clears throat> and then he uh, he counts down, and uh, the challenge begins. And uh, all around the uh, Pontifex, various uh, various wizards uh, begin to uh, cast various spells, and uh, um, you see that they're all they all end up heading in various directions. So you imagine that the majority of them is probably going the wrong way. Mm -hmm. uh, what would you like to do? A tooth of a golden wolf. Uh, I think one everyone else just like scatters from the center. Pontifex just like <laughs> and it, like sits down in the middle of the floor <laughs> and just like that same thinker pose. He's like a, a tooth of a gold wolf or a golden tooth of a wolf. Hmm. He's thinking of like ways to cheat or like other ways to interpret this. Uh... Hmm. Okay. Uh, in the meanwhile, Talix, you are with uh, with Vajra, and you translate for her um, the the objective of this of this hunt. Uh, so she she asks you back. So that means that there is a wolf made of gold. And it's hidden? It could mean that, or it could be something cryptic. Okay. Well, alright. And, uh, um, similarly to Pontifex, who is not too far away from, from you, you're like maybe 30 feet apart, uh, you see Vajra sit down. Uh, she leans with her back against a tree. Um, and she crosses her arms over her chest and she closes her eyes. And you're just sort of left to stand in there. Uh, it looks like she's taking a nap. It's just something they can all do. Tell us you're just gonna stand there awkwardly with his thumbs in his belt. <laughs> Uh, Barrio and Thar and uh, Governor Morthelian are not too far off. They're each uh, uh, just watching the various uh, wizards run off in various directions. Ah, uh, Pontifex, what have you come up with? Uh, is... So this is like still in the middle of the arena, right? Uh, and no, just you're those on, rings have come down. You're you're not on the arena. You're you're down on the ground. You're oh. like on in seemingly and on proper. You would have been oh. uh, in the big plaza. So over here, we move these minis. You're not here. Uh, okay, he's gonna. I think he's just going to head towards the Church of the Wolf. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, that's where he's going to go. He's like, well, it is an odd request. Maybe it doesn't have to be gold, like a living thing. 
and he's gonna go there and basically try to find like a gold statue or like ornamentation of a wolf's head or something like that. Okay. Uh, roll an investigation check with advantage. This is the one where I get my extra plus four. Vidalkin. Uh, similarly uh, to the way that uh, you using Fireball added a plus three to your spell, if there is any, uh, to, to your roll, I mean, if there is any spell you want to use to aid you with this, uh, um, and this applies for the rest of the tournament, you can always add its level as a bonus to the roll. If it makes sense for it, of course. Uh, uh, would I be able to guidance myself? Well, guidance is available, yes, absolutely. So, I have, hold on, so I have plus 8 from Investigation, plus 1d4 from the doll, plus 1d4 from Guidance. guidance. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't think there's any other spell that I can do that's actually going to help. Uh, maybe Detect Magic? Maybe um, not. He, uh, oh, look, he would blow a spell slot on it instead of Ritual, because that takes time. <laughs> uh, the, the, the the problem with that is that Detect Magic is also concentration, so you can't have that and guidance. Oh, you're right, you're and, right. Uh, but, I mean, you can just do it. I just will not add, like, the plus one to the roll from, uh, from Detect Magic, and I'll tell you what Detect Magic actually does. Uh, okay, yeah, sure. Uh, I guess he'll, he'll, like, do a detect magic just to see if there's, like, anything that immediately jumps out. Otherwise, mm -hmm. he's gonna, he's gonna guidance and just do the good old investigation. Okay, uh, go ahead and do that roll, uh, as I'll tell you right away that there is nothing magical in the church that, uh, uh you, oh, that you can advantage, sense. sorry. Advantage, uh, thanks I'll to just roll another d Um... Oh, I didn't add a, a d20 on that at all. That was literally just the, the d4s. Uh, yeah, that's a d4 with the d4 of my skill, so I'm just going to roll two, two d20s and I'll just add those to it. So 13 plus... Plus uh, 13. 13, 26 would be the highest roll. Okay. Uh, there's a lot of people that have had the same idea as you. Uh, various spellcasters poking around in the, in the church. Um being uh, some more respectful than others um, it looks like there is a there is an elf in here a priest who uh, is a little annoyed that this is happening he's telling people to like not touch this do not touch that uh, um, careful not to break this or that um, and uh, <clears throat> you search quickly and thoroughly uh, and you are absolutely positive uh, that any representation of the wolf that is within this church uh, is not m made of gold or doesn't even look like it's made of gold. Uh, you feel like, particularly with the, the challenge starting in the plaza that's <clears throat> immediately in front of the church, <coughs> that uh, uh, this is not the place where you're supposed to look. Hmm. Uh, but at the very uh. least, you reach that conclusion rather quickly. The um, priest guy, the elf, who's like kind of annoyed with all this, is this like, it's it's clear that he knows what we're looking for. Like he knows we're supposed to find a gold wolf tooth or something, and he, he's he, just annoyed and wants everyone to leave. Yeah, he he looks like he knew that this was going to happen. Okay. You hear him mutter that he wanted to keep the church closed uh, for for the during the tournament time, but like he he knew that people would break in if he did that. Okay. Uh, I guess that while he's like on this thought process, uh, I'm going to use my telepathic feat and cast detect thoughts and uh, basically try to get like some some surface thoughts just in the room and see if anyone has like an aha. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to immediately like dig deeper on the the priest, the cleric, and see if he's thinking of any location in particular. See if he knows something. So I can get surface thoughts on creatures within 30 feet of me. Okay. 
everybody uh, around you, um, their their surface thoughts are all about the the actions they're currently doing. So you hear the person thinking about maybe under this bench, the person thinking uh, maybe uh, on the altar, um, and they all seem to be. Um, fumbling around a little bit, just guided by the idea that it's probably in a treasured wolf, um, but not with a, with a particular idea in mind, and nobody who seems to, to have actually found uh, what they're looking for. Uh, and the moment you your spell lands on the priest, um, uh, the, you're filled with his annoyance uh, and uh, uh, the, these thoughts like you had you had you had already figured this out from his own uh, um, body language uh, um, how much he dislikes the fact that there's all these people just turning his church upside down um, what does it take for you to it's a wisdom saving throw right uh, yeah wisdom save uh, DC 16 okay luckily for you this is not a cleric and doesn't have eye wisdom. Uh, so I have a 12. Uh, okay. Then, uh, let me see. Which means. Uh, if it fails, deeper... like an insight into its reasoning, its emotional state, and something that looms large in its mind, something such as something it worries over, loves, or hates. Okay. Um, so I've already, I've already told you about uh, his reasoning and emotional state, uh, and you kind of confirm uh, all this uh, as, you, as you see uh, into his mind, and he, he looks up at you as he senses this, this presence in his head, um, and, and you, hear, you, you hear his stream of consciousness almost like a voice as he, as he uh, thinks, oh, not again. And you realize you may not have been the first person to even try this on him. Uh, and his thoughts quickly move to, to Baryon Thar and to the, and to the governor uh, as he is silently blaming them for what's happening to him. Uh, and you, you uh, come to understand as this guy begins to try to fight off your presence in his mind that he doesn't know where the treasure is. But uh, uh, Baryon Thar and the governor do. Hmm. Okay. Uh, and the governor would be at the town hall? Uh, both of them were in front uh, of the town hall. Both of them were there to, like, start off this challenge. Mm. Uh, okay. Okay. Then, yeah, if they're both there, then he's going to try to expedite this process, yeah, and he's just going to head straight there, and he has a pretty, like, aggressive plan for both of them. <laughs> okay. Uh, in the meanwhile, um, Talix, you, like, it's been, it's been a few minutes, and you've just been watching this teenage girl uh, just fall asleep, and you've been left with your hands in your pockets, watching some people um, walk by, other other spellcasters, you saw some of them head one way, and then 10 minutes later they're running the opposite way. Um, the majority of them don't seem to really have a good idea of what to do. Um, and when you look back towards Vajra, her... She's still there in the same pose, uh, in, with her arms crossed over her chest, but her her body is becoming faint and sort of see-through. Uh, she seems to be fully asleep, her breathing is slow and deep, uh, and as you're looking at this, sort of like she's in the process of becoming invisible, uh, it, it only takes a few seconds until... She's completely gone. Oh. Uh, Talix is gonna look around real quick. Is anyone else looking at this? Uh, it looks like a lot of people in the rings flying over you um, have noticed. You, you can hear the, the loud murmurs even, even from the distance. So this um, was a surprise to them? Yeah. Is her grandfather out there? Uh, yes. 
there is this section uh, in one of the floating rings uh, where the crowd is made up entirely of like some of the members of the Etarava tribe you've met, and and yes, you did see you did see her, her grandfather there. And what's their reaction? Completely, complete lack of surprise. Okay. So like, yeah. still gonna like try to put his hand where she used to be. Is she there? No. Yeah. Uh, Talos is going to frantically start looking around and trying to find her. <laughs> that, yeah, that's uh, that's what Talos will be doing when, when Pontifex comes back out to the church. Uh, so back to you, Pontifex. Uh, What's uh, your yeah, very if, violent if plan? He's heading straight towards the uh, where the governor and Barry and Thar are. Mm hmm. Uh, and I'm gonna do two things if I can. Uh, first, I'm going to uh, actually blow a spell slot to cast uh, Detect Thoughts and just try to get surface thoughts on both of them. Um, you... What's the distance for Detect Thoughts? Um... Uh, 30 feet. Okay, uh, so you're kind of close-ish to them. Um... It seems like uh, their thoughts at first are about uh, uh, about Talix as I see him uh, uh, running around frantically. Um, and that that's a moment when you realize that Talix is alone and seems to have lost Vajra. Uh, but you, you have mm -hmm. other things to worry about. Uh, um, and as I see you, um, you feel this sense of... Uh, um, like the 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 governor um, holds you in high regard, uh, not just for saving the colony, but just as a professor of of the College of Scribes, um, and he like he almost thinks of you as as a fellow elf. Um, Baryan Thar's surface thoughts are very organized and very controlled. Um, you can feel that his, his mind uh, is... Uh, um, it's quiet, but not in the sense that not a lot is taking place. It's in the sense that you're, you're struggling to actually breach through it. And you remember that uh, um, this was something you had already tried on him before. And there had mm -hmm. been a very powerful resistance pushing back. And you couldn't you couldn't move past it until he let you. Uh, you feel like reading his deeper thoughts or even just the surface ones uh, is going to be a challenge. You also uh, figure great. like uh, the rewards would be would be great. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go at him with a sledgehammer here in a second. Uh, <laughs> but I'm I'm just gonna I'm gonna focus in on the the governor first with the detect thoughts. Oh, is it wisdom save time? Mm hmm, yeah. Uh, DC 16 wisdom save. <laughs> Seven. <laughs> I think he's actually gonna like shout out loud. Hey, where is the tooth, by the way? <laughs> Just to try to like lead his brain there. <laughs> <laughs> to to which the 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 <laughs> governor a little startled shouts back, "Where well, you are supposed to find it yourself?" <laughs> um, and he like chuckles a little bit, and then he realizing your presence in his <laughs> mind, he just goes, "Oh no!" <laughs> um, and 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 you felt like as he was shouting back at you and chuckling a little bit at how silly it was of you to even ask him. Um, yeah, his thoughts immediately went to the lake. Ah, beneath the surface of the water. Ha. Huh. And then just like after a moment, thank you. <laughs> He's gonna turn <laughs> and start walking to the lake. You see, you see him and Baryon just exchange a glance and it looks like Baryon Thar understands exactly what happened. Um, you, you kind as you approach the you head north to the edge of the lake and and you approach the the water uh, you're kind of reminded uh, of uh, the way Shalera had 
um, told, uh, had said that uh, the uh, the tournament will go swimmingly. Ah. Uh. I see, it was a and poor attempt figure, at a joke. And you figure you're on the right track. Great. Yeah, he's just going to, like, nonchalantly hobble into the water and just keep going, because he can... He's partially amphibious. Mm -hmm. um, by the time you've entered the lake, it looks like a couple other spellcasters have... Uh, um, started to look into the lake and uh, um, each of them is resorting to, to magic uh, if it is available to them uh, to either explore beneath the lake or um, there's one who's walking over the surface and just sort of like looking around that way uh, mm. for, for you have the advantage here um, are you taking off your armor for this? Uh, no, he's keeping his armor on to weigh him down. Oh, and you're gonna like walk. Uh, he's literally just the walking the along the floor of it because okay. he can. He can basically breathe for an hour. Uh, so we're just gonna go with another uh, investigation check with advantage. Cool. Can I guidance this one as well? Uh, you can. Cool. And like these other fools, who have to use magic to breathe. this work? Did the advantage button work? Uh, it did not. I'm gonna roll one more d20. Uh, it, I, I rolled double ones on the left, though. Huh. It still says between parentheses that it was with advantage. Yeah, I clicked the advantage button. Okay, well, it's the same value. The, so 17. The advantage is just gonna take the highest die. It's not gonna... So it took the nine out of those three dice. Yeah, because that's uh... a d4, a d4, and a d20. And yeah, I just tried clicking advantage and see if it was going to roll another d20, and it didn't. Yeah, okay. maybe I should... That's a little more complex than what it does. Yeah, yeah, adding a bunch of dice to it. But the result is 17, yeah? Even? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Actually, um, can I inspiration for this one? Uh, yes, you can have, like, super advantage. You can, like a you third. Can, you can roll the yeah, you can roll a third roll and use any of the three. Yeah, let's do it. I just got it. Might as well spend it. <laughs> gotta use the die though. There you go. Huh? Uh, so nineteen. Uh, eleven. No, twenty-one. Because it's eleven plus ten. Wait, hold on. Yeah, the, those yeah. values aren't right. It's a one, a one. Right, it only is, took is the plus highest, ten, right? and then I rolled a yeah. nine before, so it should have been a nineteen before. Mm -hmm. And this would be a twenty-one. So I was calculating wrong. So oh, it's fine. It's a twenty-one. Okay. Yoink! This goes into my dice bag. Um. Mm, click, 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 click. Okay. Uh, the the major obstacle uh, for you in this search is the fact that uh, uh, beneath the surface of the water, and particularly particularly the deeper you go, the darker it gets. Um, but uh, with the bigger obstacle of, you know, uh, being able to, to breathe water out of the way, and your ability to make light in the first place, um, you quickly search the bottom of the lake, and it, uh, uh, it doesn't take you too long uh, before you spot, uh, uh, well, you spot Vajra before you spot uh, the statue of the Golden Wolf. Um, you mm. see her, um, you see her hair, um, the, the, the water is, uh, is, uh, um, is messing with her hair and it's all in her face and she's trying to pull it back while simultaneously uh, pulling uh, at a, one of the fangs of the statue that just seems to sort of like snap um, and remain in her, in her hand. And you can see that her cheeks are puffed out and she does seem to be holding her breath. Um, and she looks back at, uh, at you uh, and closes her eyes and she fades out of existence. <laughs> you missed it. Time to become Pontifex the Drowner. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, 
whenever she, like, uh, I, mean, I guess he would try to do this as quickly as possible whenever he saw her. Um, I'm going to cast, uh, let me make sure it can do this. Oh, provided there's no creatures in it. Okay, so I can't do that. Uh, I guess while she's like, she has her cheeks puffed out and stuff, uh, and she's yanking on the tooth, uh, I'm going to cast Shape Water. And am I able to do this to make like, like rather than like, I guess I'm trying to clear water from a space to make like a air bubble in the middle, just to move water outwards. I guess form the water inside of like a five foot sphere to be like uh, That a seems empty to sphere. be beyond this, the scope of the spell because there is no air that like can take the place of, like, you can move the water, but it's just going to be more water. Ah, that makes sense. Uh, can I... Oh, I can change the flow. Like, I can animate it. Okay, great. Then I guess I instead I'm going to cast Shape Water and try to, like, change the current of it or whatever to just try to make it as difficult as possible to move through it. <laughs> For her? Yeah. <laughs> That's... that's so spiteful. What? She's a wizard. Whatever. Breathe. <laughs> or don't. Uh, drop the tooth. <laughs> I think it's actually he'll say that underwater if he can. <laughs> drop the tooth or I'll go let you go. <laughs> um, yeah, okay. Well, uh, the... Oh, in Aquan for yeah. sure. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, so you slow her down and she seems mm -hmm. to really be struggling to pull out this tooth that seems otherwise designed to be removed from the statue um, like her, her movements slow down uh, ultimately what you did doesn't stop her from fading out of existence and that you're not sure what that was about mm -hmm. um, but you, you feel like at, at the very least uh, um, yeah you slowed her down um, uh, okay, and she she grabbed the tooth and then it disappeared with her. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the the wolf statue it looks like it was in a container and it's currently out of that container, like a little thin metal box. Um, and the statue still has plenty of fangs in its mouth. Uh, okay, then yeah, sure, he'll uh. He'll, he'll, I guess, take another one of the fangs. Uh, actually, he's going to try to take as many of them as he can. Yeah. Um, you, you you reach with your hand and you pluck one tooth out. Uh, and it, it looks like it's designed to just snap off really easily. Um, and so you're like, okay. And you just pass your finger over the other teeth and none of them budge. Fair enough. Uh, then yeah, he's going to uh, he's gonna try to make his way back. I guess. Uh, I actually think this might make it somehow easier for him. Uh, I'm gonna try to do uh, shape water again, and I'm going to freeze five foot like <laughs> cubes of the water. And for you're him going to, to like hold on to it. Yeah. Like freeze a five foot thing and just like grab it and see mm -hmm. if it'll just kind of. Like, you know, and maybe even use it because I can have uh, two of its non instantaneous effects. So I can freeze the thing, and then that is, I just have a block for an hour. Uh, and then I'm just going to repeatedly cast Shape Water to like adjust the current. I'm basically riding this ice block like a, like a raft, or I guess like a, like those inflatable, I don't know what they're called, the things you throw overboard for someone that's drowning, the little ring. Okay, just yeah. holding on to that and then controlling the water current to like try to, to drag it towards the shore faster than he can move. Yeah, you hold on to your giant ice cube uh, and you're pulled to the surface with it. And then you sort of try to like balance on it or hold on to it while uh, gently making the, the flow of this uh, surface water push you towards the, um, the, uh, the shore. Uh, and as you're doing that, you see a few other 
a few other wizards are jumping into the lake or walking over the lake surface, like going in the opposite direction from you. Uh, and you kind of try to like on purpose make it look like you're coming from the wrong direction, at least a little bit, just to throw them off. Um, because you've had a bad day, so everybody else, uh, uh, now else needs to, to suffer. Everyone else has to suffer with me. Um, and yeah, you make it to the shore having uh, made as little physical uh, strain as possible. And you have um, a little golden tooth with you. Yeah, he's going to try to hoof it back. And he's, this would be a lot easier if I had a flying cat to just <laughs> deliver it to damn it. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's hobbling through the town. Um, those of you who are watching from above, have you seen uh, um, all these wizards just scatter across the city? You've, some, you've seen some of them fly up to the arena to see if uh, uh, the, the treasure was there. You've seen some of them go to the floating towers, some go in various directions in the city, and like a small number of them head straight for the lake. Uh, Pontifex is... Uh, pretty easy to spot from a distance. Uh, you see his blue cloak and just his blue body. Um, and, and you notice that he, like, after going to the church, he quickly uh, went... <laughs> um, <laughs> quickly. Quickly, <laughs> quickly went uh, uh, towards the lake and then eventually, sometime later, he, he comes back out by the time when the majority of the wizards are also heading towards the lake. Um, Talix says for you, uh, at some point, as you've been looking left and right for, like, you, your one job was to be with this one girl, and you managed to somehow misplace her. Um, <laughs> and, and at some point, you turn back, and there she is, under that tree, stretching. Um, her hands are both closed in a fist, but then once, once she's done stretching, she opens up one of them, and you see that she's holding on to something that looks like a golden tooth. Is ah, she also fang. drenched? She is drenched. I think Talix will only know to make the connection to what he's seen Squeak do. <laughs> <laughs> the beach. The beach. Yeah, he's gonna, he's gonna, like... The ultimate Rush treasure her, hunt, you have to go to then, hell. And like, then kind of look perplexed for a second and ask, Did you? And then he's going to like struggle to think of how to say this in Atar. And, Did you go to the beach? <laughs> and uh, see if she even like re responds to that. <laughs> she wipes her, her eyes and then like just very matter-of-factly says, Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and she stands up. Um, she she. Uh, tw uh, oh, what's that gesture you do when you have like like a wet cloth or something, and you're like squeezing it? <laughs> you wring it out. Yeah, she's doing that to her hair. Um, and while doing that, she she got she goes over to Barinthar and the governor. Um, and she reaches into a pocket where she momentarily put the fang and hands it over. Uh, Talix, you know she's, uh, since we're running around in this area, you know she's not the first person to deliver it, but she's one of the first. Did, did it, it was the bard, wasn't it? Uh, no, the bard doesn't show up yet. Oh. Alright. Talix Looks like keep like, an eye out for him. The first challenge was the one where he shined, as it was about impressing people, and it seems like mm -hmm. finding hidden things may not be like, he may not be as good at it. Oh, so he's like a dumb, <laughs> dumb but good, good looking kind of thing. <laughs> I, if that's the judgment you want to pass okay. of him. Um, I like it. Like, yeah. even as you're, like, thinking back uh, about the, the handsome elf elf, you're kind of reminded <laughs> that you actually saw him once before. Uh, you spotted uh, him yesterday oh, um, yeah. doing, like, I illusion magic in one of the plaza and telling stories. Oh, it was actually setting something up. Look at you. <laughs> Yay! Yay. <laughs> A storyteller. Um... And shortly after that, <laughs> the bar that told yeah, one of Jason's that's recaps. The one. Absolutely. <laughs> In the future. Um, about 10 minutes after He's that is <laughs> it's when Pontifex shows up, uh, similarly drenched, um, 
uh, and also handing in Baryon's hands uh, a, a golden fang. If uh, if he sees uh, her that has successfully made it through his minor inconveniencing, he'll give her like a nice firm nod and say, uh, uh, well played. Uh, Talix, you don't really know why, but you can just tell that like she seems very um, annoyed uh, at him being there and addressing her. You feel like there's a tension there that is even like um, thicker than uh, it was water. before on your oh. uh, yeah, on your previous encounter. Also thicker than water. Uh, and hmm. she ignores him. Professor Zadig and I see. Yeah, this is still normal for him. Behold, as I perform my signature move, <laughs> misogyny. The anti-bard. Jeez. <laughs> the anti-bard. Um, by by the time this challenge is over, it looks like about how uh, almost half of the contestants are already out uh, from the rest of the tournament, and it seems. Uh, uh, the, the rumors are that the next challenge is going to be uh, something that is called uh, a puzzle room. Um, and I'm, I'm going to call for a 10 minute break here. And uh, we still have Pip and, and Tekka who can offer, uh, either of them offer assistance on the next one. Um, so you can think about it. Uh, and, this and talk about be an escape room. It's an escape room. <laughs> <laughs> Her, oh, nice. And, refreshingly uh, inspired from a few weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I'll, I'll see you in 10 minutes. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. Okay. Woo! Hey, Woo! Is there like a scoreboard? Can we, can we like get a feel for how everyone's doing? <laughs> Sure, there's a scoreboard. It's a tournament. Come uh, on. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I want to know I, how's the professor holding up compared to the competition. Yeah, okay. Um, so the professor. Maybe that's something you can... uh, out of. Uh, there's currently still. Uh, s there's still 72 participants in the tournament uh, that are still in after the after the treasure hunt. <clears throat> Uh, and uh, it looks like the professor is uh, uh, currently in 8th place. He's doing very well. Top 8, we make it. <laughs> uh, Vajra got, uh, got some points uh, in the... That's right, Mario Kart. Uh, Vajra seems to have done really well in the latest uh, challenge, uh, but she, she had struggled, struggled the with round, uh, <laughs> um, a lot of things that required uh, specific kinds of magic. You, you've seen this previously, and uh, it's it's very clear uh, during the tournament that her magic is just drastically different from everyone else's. Um, not just not just in a sense like the way she performs spells, but uh, the spells she's doing are spells that, for the most part, you don't recognize or you can't think of an equivalent uh, from Blorna. Um, and that does seem to have gotten like the interest of the crowd. Uh, people seem to be enjoying seeing what she can do. Um, but like in, in terms of scoring, she's, she's, she's keeping up, uh, but she's not excelling in any way. You see, this is a prime example of how standardized tests can be culturally discriminatory. <laughs> <laughs> well, she doesn't understand half the prompts. <laughs> she excels in her own way, but we're testing based on our own assumptions of what it may be. Y yeah, it's cause... a wizarding competition. Druids, get your own. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, now I'm going to go for a 10 minute break. Yeah. Alright. Okay. See you in a bit. See you. Bye. We are ready to resume. I'm just gonna bring Brooke this back and bring uh, the music back. And I'm going to ask 
uh, who is going to attempt to assist the Pontifex uh, before the next challenge? Gosh, I don't have a good idea for tech uh, advice here, so... If All right. You got anything... Wait, what, what is the next challenge? A puzzle? Uh, puzzle. Oh, right, that's right. No cryptic knowledge you can bestow upon him. <laughs> no. Did you do the puzzle in the very first dungeon? So, so Professor, thing. you need to look for the hook with hook the with eyebrows. eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> um, right, hook, eyebrow, remember this. So, I think, uh, I think, uh, Pip is going to pat you on the back and be like, Don't worry, we're all gonna be watching and helping you from afar. And then he winks, and then you feel like a little bit of weight on your shoulder. Uh, mm. as an invisible being is now yeah. present and it'll be like and I'll be helping you in the room <laughs> <laughs> and so he's gonna just sort of be you know another pair of eyes looking around invisibly flying around the room and seeing if there are any uh, any sort of things that are hidden that Pontifex didn't see oh no interesting Okay. Alex is supposed to be in there and not mention anything about the puzzle. Mm hmm Yeah, you have been asked to not to only translate for her, not actually offer any assistance. This is impossible. <laughs> this job is too hard. <laughs> this job is too hard. No, Matt. Yeah, Matt's done. <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> we lost Matt. Sid, you should actually just give him one of your wisdoms and let him make the connections to it himself. <laughs> that was the backup plan if it didn't have anything. <laughs> uh, Tucker oh, just Matt. says something mysterious yeah, and no, everyone's I'm sure I'm that he him. knows the answer. <laughs> yeah. No matter what you'll find, but you will be able to point it back to Tucker's poem. <laughs> Okay, hello? Hello! Hello! hello. What happened? Uh, internet hiccup. My internet's gonna be kind of wacky. Like, if I don't know if you guys see it on your but my ping is probably pretty rough. Yeah. You, you had it literally just installed. There's, there, it's, it's a yeah, miracle like, that you were even ma able to make. There's going to be a, a, a recurring amount of issues, but it's kind of like a number one priority because Aww. our job and my everything. So we have to get the internet thing fixed. It's okay. Nothing but, uh, can, nothing can bother me yeah. right now because they have a cat on my lap. Mm, nice. I'm very happy. Thanks. So I have a question. Oh. Yeah, what is this it? puzzle room, is it like everyone in the same puzzle room at so, once, or does everyone go through it individually? Uh, the, uh, you, the, the crowd would see um, that during the, the, the preparations, during the previous challenge, uh, there were preparations being done on the arena, which was like part of the reason why one challenge took place outside of it. Um, was that in the meanwhile, over here, you saw them setting up these... Uh, um, and, and Pontifex had spotted these yesterday, these large cube-shaped structures. Uh, and they are all over the arena, so it looks like there's multiple puzzle, puzzle rooms. And, and when the time comes, it, it, uh, it looks like everybody will have their own, but it's in groups of two. Uh, so two randomly paired spellcasters uh, end up having to uh, solve these various puzzles in this room together and uh, um, there's like a thing they have to find and then they can come out uh, so like if they've come out without the uh, the the object uh, then they they haven't passed the challenge I think we lost Matt oh we lost Matt again no. No? Oh, yeah, I lost you guys for no oh, this is painful Right. So two did more you, questions. Did you oh, uh, hear hold on. Yeah, Matt, that? did you miss any any of it? Huh. Yeah, I didn't hear anything. I heard uh, Austin was asking, "Is in this room? Is there?" And then gone. Oh, oh no, that <laughs> was like all now. of it. All right, from the top. <laughs> from the top. Um, each spellcaster 
is going to pair it up with a, a different contestant. And he, mm. so in groups of two, uh, everybody has their own little escape room that they have to solve and leave. And all these escape rooms were those cube-shaped structures you saw them set up uh, yesterday in mm -hmm. the arena. Um, okay. And, and because of what you saw yesterday, you also saw that each of them seems to be positioned above one of those pipes that you had seen. Mm -hmm. uh, and when the explanation is given of what's actually going to happen, it seems like there's a time limit. And uh, um, when the time limit expires, the rooms are going to start to, uh, um, flooding. Oh no, when the With timer runs lava. out, I will have another hour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's like your thought process. You're like, well, like, mm -hmm. uh, but you are paired up with, whoops, I, I didn't mean to do this. Uh, you are paired up with the half elf bard, um, who right. uh, introduces himself to you as uh, Roeren. Uh, and based on, on your previous judgment of him, you feel like he may not be super helpful in what you're about to do? On this scoreboard, where is he? Uh, he is... Uh, he is a 47. <laughs> okay. <laughs> It seems like it is your lucky day. Um, <laughs> it takes him like a moment to understand what you're implying, and then he just chuckles to himself and he says, <laughs> Yeah, I guess so. I guess so, okay. Yeah, this is going to be great. Uh, uh, my name is Pontifex Vas Dalus Alenach, so if you need me, just call me by my name. Your full name? Well, I mean, we're not exactly on a first name basis, so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't right. know how they do things in the musical college, but in the wizarding schools, we have a thing called respect. Oh. Is calling you professor acceptable? I am not a professor. Then I've been lied to. Perhaps you have. Anyways, uh, good luck. Hopefully we do well. <laughs> Apologies if I'm distracted. I was recently turned into a dragon and then it taken away from me, so you know. <laughs> As you're being locked inside of this little room, you says you what? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Pip, is there a range beyond which you can't see through? Nope. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, up in the crowd, that means that <laughs> uh, that means that the Brook Pip. Uh, and uh, Tekka all have like a chance to assist with this uh, as, as Pip quietly can tell you what's going on uh, inside of these uh, escape rooms. And you, you see that, it looks like there is this, this scrying spell that's being used to show everybody outside uh, what is going on inside of each of these uh, uh, escape rooms and uh, uh, the puzzle room, sorry. Uh, and the, the majority of the uh, the puzzles inside of them seem to be like way beyond you and there's a lot of like general knowledge or specific knowledge and looks like looks like a lot of these uh, uh, these puzzles av available uh, can be solved in more than one way and usually requires either knowledge of magic or application of magic um, and the way they're being, they're being set up it seems to allow for um, for, for multiple possible solutions so that uh, even those who specialize in particular schools of, ma schools of magic uh, can still work their way through them. Uh, and those who have a most varied amount of knowledge are the ones who have the advantage here. Um, Talix Vajra has been teamed up with uh, uh, an elf 
named uh, uh, Parent Sun Watcher, and he is doing most of the work. Uh, um, you translate a little bit in between them, and uh, uh, it, it quickly becomes apparent that it seems to just prefer to kind of do things on his own, and he really only asks for her opinion when he gets stuck. Um, and, well, you don't blame him too much, this stuff does seem to be beyond her. And we should be back alive? Hello? Okay, yep. Yeah. Hello! Hello! Hi! Hello. It was my turn to have internet problems. Um, so to, to recap what I said, uh, I said that, uh, uh that, uh, Vajra has been teamed up with, uh, uh, an elf called the Parent Sun Watcher, and she is definitely struggling with the kinds of riddles and puzzles that are in this puzzle room. Uh, and, uh, Talix, well, you offer, you know, you translate the... Uh, uh, between the two of them, but ultimately the, the elf uh, seems to kind of uh, understand that she's not going to be much help here. Um, through not much of a fault of her own, she's just young and doesn't know a lot of this like general knowledge that uh, uh, is that is assumed that people have, and her kind of magic doesn't quite match. Um, for, for, for the kind of answers that these puzzles require. And this is referring to Vajra. Vajra is not going to be much help. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 It's mainly the elf who's doing most of the puzzle solving. Okay. Um, Pontifex says, uh, as you had the thought, similarly, you're, you're breezing through uh, the majority of these. Uh, let's just have you roll... Uh, an intelligence check. Uh, you get advantage from uh, from uh, uh, Squeak and Pip, and kind of like the party's assistance through through Pip and Squeak. Um, and your proficiency okay. bonus added to it. Okay, intelligence plus proficiency. Cool. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I grant you. Ooplusperation. Oh, jeez. <laughs> uh, oh. The oopoo, oh, hey, it's, it's finally, no. it's finally <laughs> turned into wine. Okay, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> Thank you very much. Unless it's worse. <laughs> In which case... It's kind of bad. marginally better. <laughs> <laughs> marginally met better. It's a 14. It's a 14, okay. <clears throat> Wait, no, hold on. That can't be right. Plus oh, intelligence versus efficiency. That's right. I'm so. Mine. Yoink. Man, rolling 3d20s and maxing on a 6 is pretty crazy, actually. <laughs> My last one was a 3d20s and it was a 11 was the highest and the others were also comically low. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so to your total 14, also at a d8, um, this is... This is uh, from Bardic Inspiration. I had almost forgotten about it. Um, as oh. uh, uh, Rowan doesn't have, like, you know, he helps a little bit, but uh, his, his own knowledge is limited and it's clear that this is not really um, his specialty. Um, but he is a whole lot less annoying than, uh, than you had thought him to be. Um, and his insights, uh, he only offers them when they are relevant and useful. And otherwise, he's just a pleasant person who is very encouraging of your efforts. Oh, would this have been something I could guidance? Uh, yeah, it's a check, yeah. Toss is it in okay? A D4. Can I add that too? Yeah, a D4 cool. and a D8. Oi. <laughs> <laughs> 17. Okay, so you had started out like like feeling like you got this, you're nailing this, uh, but ultimately you are slowed down by the fact that uh, uh, you are doing most of the work uh, in what is uh, designed to be something that's that's uh, solved by two people. Um, and He's a, convinced as... that Shalira did this on purpose. <laughs> to, to, to team you up with the to team with the up bard. with this guy to like, uh, you know. 
Make me, give me a yeah. handicap. Well, ultimately, you find something or someone to blame other than yourself. Um, yeah, ultimately. Yeah. And, like, you, you began by breezing through it, and then you begin to slow down a little bit, and then you're really feeling just, like, how, how much uh, heavy lifting you are doing in this duo. Um, and then, you know, th there finally comes a moment when you're, like... You've solved most of the riddles and puzzles throughout all this, uh, but you you hear a chime uh, go off, and uh, you're you you hear the rushing, uh, the the rushing of water, and uh, the room is slowly beginning uh, to fill up and at this point it's just the floor being a little bit wet uh, and, and your feet end up being soaked and uh, you realize quickly when the smell hits you this isn't water it's vinegar oh no uh Oh jeez. Uh, yeah, For the I think second it, time today, uh, you flash back to when Shalera had said that the tournament would go swimmingly. Uh, I think when he just assumes that it's water because you know it's clear, he is like unperturbed and just kind of continues doing whatever we're doing. And then when the smell hits him, I think he just like freezes up. Like in the middle of whatever action it is uh, and just is kind of like paralyzed uh, I think he's like trying to cover his his. Uh, I, I was going to say his mouth but I actually think he's like straight up grabbing the top of his of his hood like his cowl and like pulling it over his face completely and he's like hiding um Pip, you witness this through Squeak's eyes, and uh, uh, Roweran also notices Pontifex just kind of stopping mid-puzzle, and just looking at him, stepping a little bit closer and calling, uh, uh Pontifex? Pon no, Pontifex Vastalus, uh, are, are you okay? No, no, I'm not okay. I, I want out. I, I, I'm undone. I give up. I want to leave. C can you tell them I'm done? I'm, I want, I want out. To let me. We, I, I quit. We're, we're almost done. We just. No, I know. I, you're almost done. I am done. I'm done. And he's like covering his head with his hood, and I think he starts like knocking on the side of the like of the the box that we're in. Yeah, I, I need out. If I don't get out, I'm going to blow my way out. I need out. I need out now. Uh, uh, oh, okay. I, 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 I don't know what's going on, but just just take a deep breath. I need you to roll a charisma saving throw. <laughs> uh, oh no, I'm actually okay at these. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Do I have a racial thing for this? I do. I have advantage Wait, on these. Wait, um, one second. Can I add, uh, um... Yeah, you can add the Bardic Inspiration saving throws, right? Why did I close the Carter sheet? Uh, yeah, is he giving me a Bardic Inspiration on this? <laughs> oh, I thought he was casting a spell on me. <laughs> you get to use um, Oh, wait, yeah, that can't, that can't work in reverse. Uh, only hey. a specific subclass can do it in reverse. <laughs> Oh, you mean he's trying to use it to, to lower my save? Yeah, that's uh, a... Yeah. No, but let me double check. If he can do it uh, that way. I know unsettling words is one that like makes people lower their save by that number. I think. Yeah, which is a college right of now, yes. Is eloquence. He okay. is eloquence. Okay, yeah, I think he can do that. So he's debuffing me. Uh, bardic inspiration subtracted number rolled for the next saving throw. Yes. Okay. Uh, um, and I have advantage on this because of Vidalkin dispassion. Oh shit! Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's let's see what it dies to say. So uh, it's... What? <laughs> okay. Um. 
And then I remove uh, AD8. Uh, go ahead and roll it yourself. Ooh, good. <laughs> uh, well, you are passed. Uh, so he's he's attempted to cast the calm emotions upon calm you. Emotions, yeah. uh, <laughs> like just. You know when you're angry and somebody tells you to just calm down? To calm down. <laughs> yeah, this is this is uh, when you when the spell doesn't take hold, that's all that's left. Uh and it does not help. Quick question, is vinegar flammable? Oh. I don't think it is. No, it's not. Okay. Uh, not flammable. Is vinegar conductible, like ionized? <laughs> uh, it's a, is vinegar conductible? It's water conductive. with ions in it, so it should. No, it's yeah. a weak conductor. Vinegar is a very <laughs> no. poor electricity conductor because okay. it lacks free ions. The, oh, the right, strangest awesome. things that you make me Google. <laughs> He's going through all of the chemistry in his head of how can I blow this room to pieces. <laughs> Now the rest you of the party. Yeah. Um, everyone uh, but Talix is is privy to what's going on in the room. Okay, um, wait, wait, wait. So is the same thing not happening in my room? Uh yes, your room is filling up, but like the I mean that you don't know about Pontifex's panic, but you can imagine it because the room is, is filling vinegar? up with vinegar, yes. So okay. this which like strikes you as like a I, really I know, odd choice. I know, the, I know the story. Right. Um, you figure like so it's no coincidence. I was gonna say, I don't think Talix was able to withhold at least a little bit, uh, maybe being somewhat leading in his translations. Okay. But as soon as, as soon as he realizes that the room is filling with vinegar and thanks to what's happening with the professor right now, I think he's just gonna like not care and try to get us out of there. <laughs> Well, you so are I, in a I room that's filling up, but like, honest. this is the one challenge where your life does appear to be on the line. Talix is gonna make an honest effort to just say, screw it, I'm I'm gonna help him get us out of here. Okay. Disqualification be damned. Okay. Uh, that's noted. Okay. Um, uh... Romian intelligence check, uh, um, Talix. Uh, just see how much your, your just... assistance helps. Okay. Oh, hello? Here we go. <laughs> okay. Oh, I thought that was a two. <laughs> That's reasonable. Right. Okay, okay, noted. Um, so, yeah, you're beginning to help. Um, the... Right. You yourself not being a wizard, uh, a, 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 instead of being a... a a spellcaster of the divine variety. It's clear that uh, um, these puzzles were not made with someone like you in mind, um, and they—they they, uh, you can help a little bit less than other spellcasters could. But sometimes your, you know, your outside perspective is just a thing that's needed uh, to help out. Um, and uh, neither Vajra nor, nor Perrin seem uh, against this, as like the room is filling up, so um, they just go with it. Mm -hmm. uh, the rest of the party. So, uh, yeah, Pip relayed it to, to everyone else. No, something's wrong. The professor's room, it's filling up with... That's not water, and he's freaking out. Uh, and Squeak is just like... Uh, tapping the professor on on the side of the cheek, like, "Hey, hey, come on, come on, snap out of it! We gotta get out of here." Uh, uh, I actually think that when he's in vinegar, like, he this whole vinegar is bringing up a bunch of trauma, uh, and I think he explained something that like this was. I don't remember how much detail he gave on the vinegar thing, but it was something that was done to him, like out of malice. Uh, yeah. uh, and so I think like. Normally, I, th I, I think you guys would imagine if, if Squeak pokes like the professor on the face, he would like address it or like swat him off or something. Uh, but I think he like actively like stops whatever mid sentence he was saying uh, and like cowers away, like 
kind of tucks his chin and his head like into his shoulder and is like shaking a little. Uh, then Squeak is immediately going to fly over to the bard shoulder, turn visible and say, all right, listen to me. You don't know me ah. and I don't know you, but I'm going to help you get us out of here. You understand? Ah. Wait, what, what form is he squeaking right now? Oh, he's an imp. Okay. <laughs> uh, the the half elf looks over at Pontifex <coughs> cowering in a corner and back at, at this imp that just materialized out of nowhere and just slowly nods. And if you say anything, the stinger waves in the air. This is going straight in your jugular, you hear? Can we at least have a normal conversation? Yeah, of course! Oh, and he okay, turns good. invisible again. Alright, <laughs> just making sure. Uh, and yeah, he's just going to try and, like, <laughs> help this, this bard, you know, figure out whatever's remaining of the puzzle so they can open the door and get out. Okay, with, with people, like, relaying everything to the rest of the group. <clears throat> yes. Um, I want also everybody else to uh, roll your own intelligence checks. All right. Uh, so I, I already got Jason's. Uh, Aside, so is there straight up intelligence? With, uh, straight up intelligence for all three of you. Like Talix isn't trying to get out legitimately. He just wants to break out of this room. Oh. Is there any way that he can do anything non-conventional? To assist, or is it strictly like literally break out? Like lock picky, or anything like that? Um, or is that hopeless? He'll try it anyway. Um. Okay. So he can. Uh, it, uh, the exit, uh, the, these little puzzle rooms were, like, separated into different areas. Um, and uh, you just help out with a couple of riddles until you get to what seems to be the final area, uh, where the actual exit should be. Uh, and then you head for it and you, you try to figure out if maybe you can just, like, break out of it. Um, uh... Are you proficient with uh, Thieves Tools? Well, I have a level in Rogue, <laughs> so yes, yes I am. Uh, uh, but I do not have Thieves Tools on me, so I'd have to use something improvised, so I don't know where uh, that leaves me. Well, that leaves you with a dexterity check uh, without okay. the proficiency. Okay. Seventeen. A seventeen is not enough. Uh, you feel like if you had some proper tools with you, uh, this could be something you can do. You can see that the door is opened by some kind of mechanism, uh, and you ultimately you attempt to force it. Uh, but it seems like it requires a key that. Uh, um, sorry, using word, it requires something that is not a key, but rather it's something magical that interacts with the door to have it to have it opened. Um, so lacking a non-magical mechanism, you're you're kind of stuck, and you don't have the strength uh, uh, to to force it open. Right. That's just the sort of thing that Alex is trying. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So your total is three plus two plus seventeen plus eighteen. Is that is that Brooks? Yeah. Eighteen, three, two, seventeen. Um, which one is uh, Squeaks? Squeaks is the seventeen. Damn. <clears throat> okay. So you guys' total is a forty. Eh. Okay. Ah. Uh, you all put your heads together and each contribute a little bit in your own way. Um, 
and offer up possible solutions to, to Pip, who relays them to Squeak, who relays them to Rowan. Um, everybody else, who, um, whenever this crying spell focuses in on the puzzle room that Pontifex is in, uh, can see that uh, where before Pontifex was the one just leading the charge um, and going through the majority of the of the puzzles and riddles on his own. Uh, the roles have suddenly swapped, <clears throat> and now it's Rowan who's going through the final and hardest ones. Um, seemingly just struck by all sorts of uh, uh, lucky uh, jolts of inspiration. Um, <laughs> The uh, let's see, some of you contributing more than others. Uh, it it, uh, yeah, it it makes sense that uh, um, it's those who were born in Lidaria and who know less of what's considered like uh, like advanced uh, uh, like academic knowledge back in in Plurina that uh, you'd you'd lack that, uh, but. Uh, uh, Brook and somehow Squeak, uh, Squeak mainly because he's there and he can like move things and touch things and like just have a more immediate uh, uh, interaction with these puzzles. So, um, in particular, you're able to to uh, to really assist. assist. Um, those of you who are watching from outside, <laughs> you you are beginning. Uh, you have begun to see some of these uh, puzzle rooms opening up. Uh, a couple of them before the others started to flood. Um, and then, slowly, one by one, all the other ones followed. Um, a Pontifex, this... This amount of vinegar, the, the smell is burning your nostrils and uh, it has gotten all the way up to your knees and then to your waist. Um, and it's just... This is hell. This is the single possible way that your day could have gotten any worse. Um, and uh, it's so deeply personal and, and, and terrifying and the, your, your thoughts are no longer coherent um, you're just stuck in this memory of the past uh, trying really really hard to protect yourself from this like it, it's like you're in physical pain um, until the smell is begins to subside and you realize that the the, the, the level the height of the vinegar is beginning to lower and it's and when it happens it's quick it all just washes off away from you and with the as the smell leaves uh your mind is beginning to clear a little bit and you look up to uh to rower and just holding out a hand towards you uh, uh to to help you up as he says uh i got the exit uh, what what do you mean well, I mean, it wasn't really just me. Your, your, your familiar help. What? <laughs> he's like, sit up. He's gonna look on my cat. Where? How? <laughs> oh, you rat! Oh. Oh yes, my familiar. Uh, yes, it was, it was, it, He like he figured out the how to actually open the door. Uh, yeah, Come on, you... boss. <laughs> uh, looking up, it looks like the exit is open. Uh, yeah, I think he's like gonna grab the dude's hand to like help himself up, but like kind of jerk on his hand so hard to get up as quickly as he can. He's gonna ah. like throw the guy down into the vinegar <laughs> and just like bolt out of the room. He's <laughs> just using this poor guy as like leverage to to get up and out as quickly as possible. Okay, now now his hair is ruined. Uh, um, okay, yeah, and, and and you're stepping out, and this, the smell of vinegar outside is still a little strong as it's pouring out of like all these various different rooms, um, and the the 
the one that's like almost directly ahead of you, uh, this other cube, um, the door of that one also opens up uh, um, moments after yours did. Uh, and the first face you see is that is that of Talix. Uh, as in, in his puzzle room, um, ultimately the solution was reached <clears throat> uh, the, 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 the conventional way. Yeah, I think like the moment he's out of the room, he's uh, he's like using prestidigitation to like just snap the vinegar like out of its clothes, uh, and is just like uh, like using it again to to like make some kind of scent to to try to counteract it, like something uh, like almost herbal, uh, mm -hmm. like a really potent pungent thing that like is enough to overpower the any remaining vinegar smell. And yeah. is like hobbling off to the side and is like dropping to his knees on the on the dirt or the grass or something and just starts like vomiting heavily. Uh like just kinda off to the side. The Telex will kind of kneel by his side. Uh and offer up some of I believe I still have some of the perfume that Tekka made and gave me. Some of the crushed flowers. Uh -huh. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Uh, he'll offer up some of that to, like, let Pontifex get a whiff of that. Uh, yeah, I think... It, what is this perfume? Is it, like, a liquid? Tekka... I think it was just pulverized flowers, actually. Do you remember, Sid? Yeah, I think Talix only got it as powder. So it would have to be... Um, the salt somehow. Yeah, so it's maybe more like a potpourri than a perfume. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, yeah, he'll, like, you know, take it and, like, kind of between a horking, try to, like, hold it up to his own face and, like, calm himself down. Uh, but he's, like, he's just a mess. Like, his his normal kind of hunched over posture is even worse. He's kind of, like, in a, like, an all fours semi-fetal position. Uh, and is just making a horrible mess of himself on the, on the side. Uh... I think like he like his his hood is pulled back to like kind of keep it out of his face while this is happening. So all the like a full view of even like the back of his head, which is where the the scarring is by far the worst, uh, is just kind of in full view. Um, and after like a minute of of kind of getting that out of his system, he'll like wipe his like wipe his face on his sleeve, and uh, he's gonna like immediately jolt his his gaze kind of into the crowd uh, or wherever it would be and he's looking for her yeah you find her uh, about how far away is she <laughs> um from you she is currently about maybe 250 feet away that's in fireball range <laughs> Is it? No. <laughs> <It's not quite. laughs> I was like, oh, hold uh, on. Were you actually going for a, for a fireball? <laughs> uh, yeah, he is going to like, uh, like put his hand on Talix's shoulder and use him as like a, like a, I guess like a, a handrail to like help himself stand up. Uh, and he's just going to like have a, a horrible, like angry look on his face that Talix has definitely never seen. Uh, and he's just like marching in that general direction, uh, kind of wordlessly. Uh, but he he looks very not good. Uh, and there's probably like little bits of like I don't know crackling, like magic or something going around his hands or something, like flicking between the a bunch of different elements, like little bursts of fire and crackles of electricity and like little. Occasional wubs. Okay. Occasional wubs. Yeah, <laughs> okay. he looks very. Uh, yeah, you're basically like crossing through <clears throat> the majority of the arena, like almost uh, from uh, from one side to the other. Um, she, uh, Shalera is, is uh, seated, uh, not in one of the lion rings, but like in the in the first few rows of the. Uh, of the seats that are directly like on the sides of the arena, so really, you can get really close to her if you want to, like within uh, a distance of forty feet. 
Um, yeah, he's like marching all the way. Yeah, over you're, you're, to her. you're like, and as you're walking towards her, you see that like um, the the majority of people seem to be focused on like this uh, the the scrying screen uh, that's still showing some people uh, who, who are still struggling in their puzzle rooms with like vinegar all the way up to their chest, um, but. Her attention is on you, uh, and as you get closer, you're, you're beginning to see her expression, um, and you know her well. Uh, you can tell that uh, the, the slight smile that she has uh, is very much a delighted one. Uh, you two glare at each other and uh, you can she doesn't have to speak you probably wouldn't hear her over the crowd if she did uh, but you can tell that she's daring you to do anything well I mean I'm not one to turn down a dare you know I mean I wasn't really planning on doing anything but the uh... If she's going to take it there, then I suppose we're going to take it well, there. She didn't say or do anything. You can just, you can just tell. <laughs> I can do it. He's coming up with an excuse. Uh, I think he's like <laughs> pondering in his head, like how many casualties is acceptable, uh, and it is just having like super hyper violent thoughts, and then has like an inner monologue of hearing. Uh, Hearing Tekka's little poem about the sun and the bee, uh, and he recontorts it into something that he can understand, uh, and basically is like, Tek the Tekka in his head is saying something actually coherent, and is like talking him down. <laughs> <laughs> He's talking himself down, but in like the a guise of Tekka. The in his head is coherent. Uh, and I think he's going to like point his hand like very clearly at her. Uh, and I'm gonna cast command at first level, and he's just going to like shout loudly uh, with like thaumaturgy if possible. And he's just going to yell at her into the crowd, apologize. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what saving throw is that? Uh, it's a wisdom. Okay. Uh, it, it's a low DC. This is a cleric spell, so it's only a DC 14. Okay, and it's just. I didn't think I'd need her stat block today, but luckily, <laughs> look at me. Being She's prepared. gonna pull that and not think she needs an AC or a deck save. Ah, uh, uh, aha! Yes, here it is. Okay, wisdom, you said. Yeah. That is a 13. My DC is 14. <laughs> uh, okay. And he's just like glaring daggers at her from like probably about yeah, 40 feet away. Um, for the first time in your life, you see Shalira Aradova stand up. Her smile no longer a, smar a smarmy one, uh, no longer one of superiority and, and victory, uh, but her expression forcefully uh, contorted into one of sadness um, as she stands up and, and the people are sitting like right next to her, look, look up at her uh, with, with curiosity, noticing this, and she looks at you in the eyes and then does like a small like bowing gesture with her head uh just lowering forward a little bit as she says I i'm sorry no no i'm not she she follows it up immediately um uh, as the as the spell begins to fade but like now uh her face reddening with with shame uh at this this uh, uh unwanted uh, gesture of hers. I think he'll have like a 
like that all that rage and hate on his face will kind of like bleed away and he'll uh he's not gonna whisper he's saying it loudly enough of uh, i forget that you are just a child i may have gone too far maybe one of these days we can speak like adults once you grow to be one i i am not a child how dare you how dare you she's like beginning to lift a finger up at you um and then and then like slowly just like f finding herself and she as she uh, takes a breath and her, her face very red at this point but uh with with a lot of people turn turning back to look at her she she holds back but you know that you've hurt her uh, Call, calling her a child was is one of those things that really hurts her. I don't think he's going to feel satisfied, and uh, it's going to come back to the uh, to the thing. Is Squeak still on his shoulder? Um. <clears throat> so it's funny you you ask that because uh, you felt the the weight on your shoulder leave. Um. And about this time, Squeak would be flying over to the lady <laughs> and is going to try and rip a clump of her hair out and fly away with it. <laughs> um, I'll take a slight of end check from, from Squeak. Okay. Uh, the, 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 the. And look, I have her passive. It doesn't have to be sneaky. <laughs> he is invisible. Does that help? <laughs> <laughs> um, mm. rip. You're ripping out her hair. Uh, well, that part isn't stealthy. <laughs> <laughs> um, Just gonna subtly tear this out of her head. Right, like, you made it to her, but, like, failed to, like, break off a strand by, you know, like, using your claws to cut it off uh, at a point so that you wouldn't have to rip it at the roots. Uh, but your Squeak is not gentle with this and just reaches for a clump of her hair and just pulls it off. And this is at a moment where, like, Pontifex is beginning to walk away and she was, like, about to sit down uh, and she, like, jumps back uh, on her feet and, like, looks back and slaps the person directly behind her. <laughs> um, and and Squeak makes his ma makes his way makes his escape with a yeah with a with a handful of her hair. Wait, I'm not sorry. I'm not a child. Immediately 180s and slaps some <laughs> random. <laughs> I'm not a child. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Squeak cool. will. Uh, Return to Pip at this okay. point. So to to answer Pontifex, then no, Squeak is gone. You don't know where he is. Okay. Then uh, he's gonna he's gonna rejoin his uh his bard friend. Roweren. Your friend. Yeah, he didn't care to actually remember his name until. <laughs> uh, and he's going to go up to the guy and like re He's gonna hold out his hand and like reintroduce himself. Uh, I did. Uh, don't believe I remembered your name again. Well, that's that's fine. I don't remember the entirety of yours. Uh, oh, please don't worry. Call me Pontifex. Okay, gladly. I, you can just call me a rover and uh, glad we made it out. Are you feeling better? And you'll like shake your hand. Uh, yes, I am fine. Uh, just a momentary uh, lapse of judgment. Uh, or perhaps I was simply allowing you to show your true capabilities to flourish in this challenge. It might have been too easy had I been involved, you see. <laughs> well, thank you for this teaching experience. Uh, you are very welcome. It is easy to teach when there is a listening student. Uh, out of curiosity, does Pontifex mean that? Uh, yeah, he's, he's being, being genuine. Genuine. Okay. Okay. 
to which Rowan um, smile smiles. He seems to be a, a little bit younger than uh, than Talix. Um, and, and considering his age, you feel like uh, at, at least what, what little he has shown off yet, in, in particular his illusion magic uh, that you witnessed during some of the other uh, challenges. Uh, um, he, he seems to be like, you know, he's no accomplished old wise wizard, but um, you, you recognize his own merits um, and he seems pleased with, with your praise. Good, good. Uh, and he's gonna, kind of, you know, take his stance and kind of wherever, wherever go wherever he would go to await the right. next challenge. Okay. Uh, which means that everybody uh, meets back up one final time uh, as so, the, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say that the the final uh, part of the tournament is the actual uh, battles where all the remaining contestants are going to fight one another. Um, so you have time to talk, and there is time for, for Tekka also to offer his advice. How much time do we have before the duels begin, before the battles begin? Uh, the arena needs to be cleaned up for this, so you have at least half an hour. Hmm, okay. Gosh, what? I okay. I don't have anything for this. I need to think. Sorry. Well, I, uh, I, it's okay. The I others can role play to me talk more. about yeah. what just happened. Yeah. Yeah, I figured. In fact, um, Talos is probably kind of shirked Vajra a little bit at this point, um, and is just trying to figure out if Pontifex is okay. He, you did what? Um, what with Vajra? I didn't hear. Like, it's kind of walked away from her for a bit. Oh yeah. Oh. <laughs> um. That woman. Uh, you, okay, remind me because I missed the last session. As Pontifex told us that this woman was someone he had history with, do we know anything about her? Uh, he's mentioned the Aradova family in particular whenever he was asking, uh, like, uh, whenever we first got to uh, the Dragon Wagon, one of the first things he asked Kylo was, uh, like, do the do the Aradovas like wait, wait he was asking for reservations he's saying could you just tell me like do the Aradovas have a room and then they explained that and they said that the Aradovas are hosting this tournament and when they said that that's when Pontifex was very set on like I'm not missing this so the Aradova like family name in particular he's mentioned I don't think he's ever said her name uh, or even alluded so to either. there being like a particular person right I feel like from from the the place where she was seated was where the people who organized the tournament were. Uh, so at the very least, the connection that she might be in Aradova would be there. But otherwise, uh, Talix doesn't know anything about the, this person or her connection to Pontifex. Nobody does. Plus her. Uh... Who is that woman? Uh, that is... Uh, that is the reason I wanted to attend this whole thing. Uh, besides the initial interest in the coupon, of course. Uh, she is Shalira Erdova uh, from Simlilan. Or no, from Ilian Arden. Uh, yeah. When I went to the city to study the arcane ways, you know, to to branch out from my divine focuses. Uh, I sought to be sponsored by a wizard college, you know, the best place to learn is a school. Uh, and one of them in particular seemed to pique my interest, uh, the, the College of Scribes, I'm sure you are familiar. Uh, I have mentioned them on more than one occasion. Yes. But, uh, they are sort of the college that specializes in the 
changing of magic to be different, uh, primarily with the, the elemental forces. Uh, there is some planar research to go into, but that is neither here nor there. But it is the magic I was most interested in, and it is a sort of prestigious uh, amongst the arcane colleges and the way that you truly get tutelage is to be sponsored or be taken under by a high scrivener uh, and in doing so it is usually involves an interviewing process uh, and Shalira Erdova was one who aspired to become a student under my uh, eventual high scrivener and I was chosen over her so she lost her chance to become a scribe and her and her family took it upon themselves to uh, pursue legal action against me they buried me in litigation and their uh, claims that I had slandered the family or wrongdoing uh, basically portrayed me as a villain uh, and, you know, the trouble it caused me in Alien Arden as not an elf, you can imagine, was uh, enough. But in the process, she also kind of besmirched the name of the college itself. And even, I believe one of them went so far as to claim that uh, Scrivener Loreithil, my tutor, my master, so to say, uh, had even colluded with me to you know, contaminate results, all of such, because there is simply no way that some foreign old men of the Moonwatch would, or not the Moonwatch, the Jade Council would ever possibly be more valid than an elf. And they have kind of made it their life's mission to make my life as difficult as possible. And we have a sort of rivalry, but it is more one-sided. So I wanted to come here to sort of show her up and to prove that I deserve the position that I got, that I had earned it over her. And I suppose she saw her chance and took it. <clears throat> she know what... How did she know what happened to you? I'm not exactly sure that had happened long long before when I was a child uh, yes I don't I don't quite know how she found of it but I, uh, word travels uh, when you have a disfiguration of some sorts like this it raises questions I don't know the Eredovas are fairly affluent so they have their ways or I don't know maybe some way of peeking into my dreams during one of my more restless nights. So... In either case, it shouldn't have affected me as much as it did. That was a long time ago. I was young and... naive. I am old and I have... I should have dealt with this by now. So in a manner, it is sort of my fault that it was taken this far. Hmm. Oh, that's... You're allowed to have pain. That's something you carry with you. That's not... This was done to you. None of this is your fault. But it is an affliction of the mind, is, which is something I, you know, hold myself to have some degree of command over, with the telepathy and the my rampant invasion of other people's thoughts. So I don't have much excuse for not being able to tame that particular part of my own. But this has shown to be more detrimental than I thought, or than I gave it credit, and perhaps I should put more focus on addressing it. <laughs> perhaps.
Perhaps you shouldn't go through with this tournament. Oh no, now that she's done this, there's nothing I want more than to show her that I am the better. Between That's the two it. of us, she's a spoiled child who is taking her jabs when she can. And to prove she is unworthy of the position that she was denied. Is there I don't think we... there's anything that could stop me now. Is there anything we can do to help you? Eh. How about after I win? You just incite the crowd to agree with me. Okay. I intend to make a spectacle of it. Of her. Okay. Well, good luck then. Well, I don't need luck. I have motivation. <laughs> That's a way to go about it. Professor, she sounds like she comes from a higher status than yourself. She did? However right you prove yourself, You know, things don't always go the way they should. And if you... If they have any reason to paint you as an aggressor, you're gonna lose in the eyes of those people. That is a risk I'm willing to take. I was never able to take action in Eleonarda because of the difference of status, but here... We're not in Plorna anymore. We're in Ladaria. This is a new place. Back in Elianarden, I was a foreigner. Here, I am a hero. The governor himself sees me as an elf. Something that was never fathomed in Elianarden. If there is any place to take my stand, it is here. She is on my turf now. Okay. I'm with you. My prayers are with you, Professor. But I'm supposed to be chaperoning someone, and I misplaced her. Um, <laughs> I guess he's on. I might have gotten her in some trouble, actually. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um... At this point, there are 32 contestants left. Uh, and this is the part where the... Uh, where the spellcasting uh, battles actually begin. Um, and the way... <laughs> so nobody drowned in vinegar. Um, for, for those that never made it out, uh, at the moment when, like, the, the vinegar reached their, their necks, uh, was the moment when the the puzzle rooms were opened. Um, yeah, everybody with like, you know, in the top in the top 32, uh, based on their score, uh, are the ones who mo move on to this uh, uh, to this part. <clears throat> and the way it is done is that uh, you're separated into two teams of 16. Um, and fight each other off that way. Uh, and then the winning team is split into two. And that's the next fight. And, and so on and so on mm -hmm. until you get down to the final two. Um, so here is how we are going to calculate how well you do in each round. Uh, oh, wait. I have yet to hear from Tekka, though. Okay. So. Uh, now you know the structure <laughs> of the tournament. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, yeah, my solution has not changed, don't worry. Um, okay. So, during this final half hour, um, yeah, for those that want to, they probably see that Tekka's, like, working on some sort of project, some sort of, like, engineering thing. He's just like sitting crouched on the ground working on something. Uh, and at the end, um, 
Tekka approaches Pontifex and hands over a strange construct of metal bars crowned with a frog toy. What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? A caged frog? But, uh, no, it's the uh, the wind-up frog from the toy store. Ah. And, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Um, teacher, I know no magic, but I know what my dad has given me and taught me. If there comes a time when magic is not enough, then place this and use it well. Uh, and Tekka will hand a fishing reel that's attached to one of the metal rods. When you pull this wire, that will shoot a dart with a solution. My advice, use your magic, create a distraction, then pull the wire. That will give you the advantage you need. I think he just looks really confused for a minute. And then he starts to, uh, like, clearly an idea is formed. And then he gets kind of like a dastardly look on his face, like a <laughs> like a cartoon villain. Uh, <laughs> about the how far is the range on this solution dart? I have not tested it yet. You remember the gift I was given by the inventor girl. Sure. I have used this here. It is strong. It will carry the dart far with power and speed. I see. Well, thank you, Teka. This is... I was uh, concerned for about a moment, but now I'm in elated. <laughs> I cannot wait to see what this thing can do. I have plans. <laughs> um, so I don't know how you want to handle this. I think it would be funnier if we did it as a roll to see how well this works when Potvex does it. I think that's yeah, for way, sure. way better. Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay, go for it. Yeah. What uh, what role do you think is more appropriate for this? Like a charisma thing? Because you were trying to encourage uh, him, or is this more about intelligence for for what you've put together? Yeah, I think I think it should be about how well this is put together because like this is not. Check. Yeah, this is not Tekka's forte. So it has to be something. Bad. You, what about a straight intelligence check? Yeah, that works. All right, so when the time comes, we'll see how it goes. We'll see if it helps at all. Yep. <laughs> cool. <clears throat> okay. So, for for each of these rounds, rather than doing like a full-on combat that we'd never be able to fit in the rest of the session, um, <laughs> we're going. You're going to make a spell attack roll. So it's going to be a d20 with your proficiency in your spell casting modifier. Um, now you can choose after you see the result. Uh, to boost your roll in the same way you've been doing throughout the rest of the tournament by adding a spell slot uh, uh, onto it. Uh, um, and you gain a bonus equal to the size of the spell slot. And you can throw in as many as you'd like. Yeah, like you can spend a four level one spell slots and you add a plus four to your total. Jeez. Okay. Um, and uh, um, I, I roll my opposite checks and they are going to get harder with like each round um mm -hmm. and it's uh, that that's it for the for the first few that we're going to do it will be just one roll and then as as like the teams get smaller it will be more than one roll per per match okay 
Um, so the first round is this big 16 by uh, against 16. Um, and uh, uh, this is uh, yeah, this is the most chaotic one, and and the crowd uh, loves it. There is just spells being slung left and right, uh, um, explosions, fire and lightning. Um, uh, Talix, you're like sort of like you end up like stepping away from all this very quickly. You basically, tell Vaj what like, to do. I, I don't think I should be in this. <laughs> yeah, you tell Vaj what to do. Who is on her team and who isn't, and then you're just out of there. Um, you basically get to see everything from very up close, but like at the very edge of the arena. Hmm. Uh, there is like one. Um, one spell, one natural one that somebody rolled that ends up like just uh, like this this little bolt of magic that ends up like like hitting the wall right next to you, <laughs> and uh, and then you just like take another step back, like almost out of the arena at that point. Uh, point effects, go ahead and roll your your first roll, and I have thirty one to do. Luckily, I found this mass dice roller. 25. Ooh, fun. Also, I think I the, in like like the giant mega conflict, the professor is like not really interested in just blowing up like a bunch of people. So I think he like when the kind of the charge happens or doesn't because it's a bunch of wizards, uh, he like is kind of staying back and more just like walking around and just observing. And is like specifically trying to find like who are the people that are just blowing everything they have for like the big spectacle, like the people who are enjoying themselves too much, and then who <laughs> are the people that are kind of doing something similar that are like kind of holding back and being efficient and being smart. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's like kind of basically trying to like pick off people that look like they're either too weak to be here and like they're going to get themselves killed. So he's trying to just like get rid of them as safely as he can. Uh, and just like kind of annoy or like frustrate the people who are actually good <laughs> to try to get like an emotional rise out of them. Okay. Yeah, yeah I mean, you go about this, you know, in, in, in a smart manner. Um, and and there there is definitely, oh, hold on, I have other music. Hey, okay. There it is. Um, there's... Uh, you get a very good idea of the battlefield very quickly. Um, uh, and there is indeed everybody who's going about it a little differently. differently. Um, one of the most recognizable um, creatures on the battlefield is that at some point you... you uh, like almost right from the get-go, uh, you noticed uh, a a red beak uh, taking part in the fight, uh, but not physically fighting. Uh, it looks like uh, uh, Vajra's magic is being channeled uh, through the creature, and she's able to uh, to cast spells from greater distances because of it. Uh, you're wondering if the bird is not allowed to like physically fight. Uh, and this was like some kind of compromise, which Talix, you know, because you were part of like this the, the translation between her and and the people who run the tournament. Uh, um, so the the bird, the red beak, isn't clawing anyone, uh, but you still see uh, Vajra's magic of, uh, being channeled through it. Uh, and uh, you, you're you're picking off these stragglers. You're annoying. Uh, you're trying to put the concentration of those who are like uh, focused on really powerful spells. <laughs> when people are trying to concentrate uh, on spells, he'll like thaumaturgy really loud croaking noises to yeah, like break their concentration very, and annoy them. <laughs> uh, croaking and occasionally goat noises. Um, For sure. And yeah, you're you're doing a lot by expending very little magic. Um, with with your your team ending up uh, um, absolutely demolishing the other one, um, you played a part uh, for for sure. But it wasn't you know like a, a, a solo effort in the slightest. Uh, it seems like he, the, luck just favored you with with who you ended up paired with. Uh, is the Bard on my team? Uh, he is. I'm trying to take special care to like, have his back, if I can. 
Okay. Without being like overly involved, but, like if he's struggling with someone, just like annoy that person a little bit to just try to give him an edge. And if he still fails, then he fails. Okay. All right, noted. Um, he has noticed this. Uh, in the next round, the the eight v eight. Uh, for your next check, uh, you can roll uh, his bardic inspiration on top of that. Uh, nope. As he returns to favor. That part of inspiration helped. <laughs> Twenty. Okay, and remember that at any point you're always you're always allowed to add in like the bonuses from the spells. Yep. Um, with uh, the fight being half the size now, it's a lot easier to like get a feel for for, for every single person here uh, and to get your spells a lot more focused where they need to go. And there's also more people who uh, pay attention to you. Uh, and this is the part where you're beginning to like actually get hit by things and targeted by, by spells. And uh, that's the moment when Roran actually like... Um, warns you of an incoming uh, bolt of fire and that you dodge out of the way of uh, and he just like he holds up a thumbs up and then gets like whacked over the back of his head with this uh, bolt of lightning uh, but uh, he, he's doing okay he's struggling uh, but Mainly being carried by by uh, by your team and the Talix. So so is Vadra really, but um, is Talix, Vadra can I on Pontifex's team or against them? Uh, he uh, she is on his team. Oh. Uh, can I have an inside check from both of you? From oh heck, no, from everybody. Oh, from me too. Yes, everyone. Oh, okay. Fifteen, nine, nine, twenty-one. Rolling. Fifteen. Fifteen. Okay. Uh, then I will not tell you anything. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Dang. Uh, this was a difficult one. Okay, but uh, Pontifex, you have made it uh, through this round as well. Um... The teams uh, have gotten small enough where you, uh, at this point, you know, like, everyone's names. Uh, these are all people you've either uh, teamed up with in previous, uh, uh, in previous uh, challenges or um, just people that, that you notice because they had started to, like, distinguish themselves. Uh, the majority of them, the majority of the people that are uh, against you, uh, they are the, the kinds of people that you expected to see in this kind of tournament, and they made up the majority of the contestants, these um, elves uh, generally in the second half of their lifespan, uh, with uh, years of experience and plenty of academic knowledge, and... Um, the, the, the kind of... Uh, the, powerful wizards that uh, uh, you're, you're not surprised to see uh, have come this far. Uh, mm -hmm. Rowan is still in the game but and uh, um, fortunately or unfortunately, depending on how you want to see it, uh, he and Vajra are both on your team and so is this elf um, named Lora... Uh, I don't think I mentioned it before. Uh, Loyarus Embergrove. Um, who who kind of matches the description I just gave you of like the... Um, uh, the the old uh, very studied wizard, um, and some of these uh, uh, let's say a couple of them you would have like even known before the tournament like would have heard their names so maybe read a book they've they've uh, they've written about uh, mm. uh, some subjects. I mean, he considers all of them to be like his his seniors because he's he's an old man, but mm. he's like still relatively new to this whole arcane thing, and the elves are a lot more like. Basically, the old wizard elves are like his, the the people that he respects, as opposed to everyone else who he kind of like expects a level of respect from. Mm hmm. Okay. Um. All right. For this, I will, <clears throat> I will take one of your um, spellcasting checks, uh, and now we'll see the result of that, and then we'll go with a second one. 
Oh, I'm rolling the wrong number of dice. Just for the fun of it, I'm gonna I'm gonna spend a first level and bump for that up 25? to a 25. Yeah. Okay. It'll like absorb elements on something. I don't know. Eat up somebody's magic to to save the the save Vajra or something. Save one of the struggling people. But for the most part, he's disregarding the elf teammate because he just assumes that he can handle himself. It'd be it's, rude otherwise. It's definitely the two of you carrying uh, the other two. Um, and there is some uh, <clears throat> on the op opposite side that seem to, like, have noticed that there's imbalance in your in your team, and to be specifically gunning for 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 the two of them. And at least Vajra, um, she's small and agile. Uh, you, the first time you met her, she was this this. Uh, she was boarding your ship uh, to to steal your your things. Uh, uh, she uh, she lives out in the wild and she she's definitely strong her um, she may not have been very good at like solving puzzles uh, but like in a fight she can hold her own it's just that her her magic as as unique and uh, as as powerful for someone her age is it's it's really not comparing to somebody who has spent centuries studying it and practicing it. Um, uh, Rowan is is unconventional um, in, in, in his fight in the sense that he's more like helping you guys out uh, more than doing damage himself. But you see, like he, uh, you see him, uh, his magic is still able to do a lot. Uh, you see him paralyzing one of the other wizards, uh, which you then uh, you're, you're the one who takes him down. Um, and, and the crowd is definitely enjoying this, like, back and forth uh, of uh, the spells. He's got counter spell <laughs> all he needs. <clears throat> um, but the, the first round of this match is in your favor. Uh, so I'll take, I'll take the second uh, uh, roll now. Calm emotions, so lose these wizards. Ooh, let's bump. Quick, cast uh, the seven let's spend spell. a. Let's spend a second level slot. Uh, yeah, let's spend a second level slot. I'll just rate it to a fifteen. That's. I feel okay about that. Uh, the total is 15? Uh, yeah, 15. Okay. Um, and the the tide of the battle uh, turns in the second half uh, um, as the, the the opponent team is beginning to find their own rhythm, um, and they all they all work together to. Uh, they. Uh, it's like th their attacks are very coordinated uh, so that you can't stop all of them at once. And the, the weakness in your team is starting to show as uh, um, your your and Loyaros' resources are mainly put into protecting the other two. Um, and with a tie, I'm going to ask for a third roll. Twenty-one. Okay, I'm glad I've gotten to the part where I can roll my dice with my hands instead of using a roller because I don't have to roll like a ridiculous number of them. <laughs> yeah. Um. Let's see. Here it is. It's more uh, a fight of attrition, this one. Um, and it, it's beginning to look like your opponents have used most of the resources available already up to this point, and they're really pushing into the reserves uh, with a little magic they have left just to stay in the battle. Um, and noticing this, your group also pushes a little bit further. Um, 
and that takes advantage of a, of a drop in their guard and uh, with a, a mighty uh, explosion from one of your spells, Pontifex, uh, uh, the battle ends in your favor. Uh, with you, Vajra, Roran, and Loyaras moving on uh, to the next uh, round. It looks like we are doing easy enough. This is... This is good. You both are doing well. And of course, you, uh, sir, are doing wonderfully. <laughs> to Loyaras? Yeah. Yeah. Um... <laughs> He, he too um, seemed to know your, your your name from like before the tournament even started and uh, um, you've actually lived uh, in the same places back in Elaine Arden a while back and you end up just having like a pleasant chat about the, the good old days. You know, one of these days when my business is done here in Ladara, yeah, if you ever go back, you should, uh, no, you should maybe come over to my estate sometime. We could have some tea and maybe discuss <laughs> Some of our research papers. I would love to introduce you to uh, the high school governor. He would, he would very much like to meet someone like you. Alex, you're, oh, you're yet left adventurous. with. Alex, you're left with with Vajra and uh, Roweren, uh, just sort of like completely excluded from from this conversation. <laughs> so, when did you learn to play the instruments? What does he play? I don't even remember. A, a lute. <clears throat> oh. Um, to which he tells you. Oh, not I... a flute. <laughs> no. <laughs> not not a golden flute, but a normal lute. Hmm. Um, to which he, um, he, he, he smiles proudly and he says, Well, I, uh, I taught myself this and a couple of others. Uh, my... My mother never really liked uh, that I was doing this. She called it a waste of time. Oh, but I, I don't mean to bore, to bore you with my life what story. Uh, well, uh, rather, perhaps you could... Impressive. Oh, thank you. Um, you know, the, I do enjoy telling stories, and I, I truly specialize in... Uh, um, well, I... I mean, you're not. And he, he, he seems to be like on the verge of saying something that he like changes his mind on and he clears his throat and he says, uh, I actually specialize in uh, um, knowledge of the, the gods. Um, so really? If you'd ever, yeah, if, if you'd ever, you know, if I, if I make it out of here alive, <laughs> um, huh. uh, maybe you'll get to, to hear one of my stories. Uh, I, I could tell you about any fox. god from any pantheon. But the fox, sure. Plenty of stories about a fox. I'd love to know if you had any stories I hadn't heard yet. Uh, yeah, see, the uh, a lot of elves are not really interested in uh, anyone other than the wolf. So I didn't really find much of an audience here. I mean, I have stories about a wolf too, but, you know, only so many. Uh, where are you staying here in town? Ah, uh, let me roll a d4. Two. Uh, it's a be... fox box. Ah. <laughs> uh, how appropriate. <laughs> you must be a, an avid fan of the fox, then. Uh, actually, not, not particularly. Oh. Um, uh, the fox isn't exactly a, a role model. Yeah, I hear that. <laughs> okay, well, just after cheap. this is all done, uh, maybe I'll see you later. Yeah, if if you hear a a lone bard somewhere in this in this colony uh, talking about uh, gods that the elves don't really care about, that's probably me. Stop by, please <laughs> throw me a coin. Gladly. Uh, who's is it? Is who's the team's next? 
Who are the teams? Pontifex His... and Vadra against the Rowan and Loyaris. Oh. Well, it was nice knowing you. <laughs> wait, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> you didn't have to do him like that. <laughs> okay. Um, I'll take your role, Pontifex. Kill him. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> Do it now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> add a few spell slots. To <laughs> <laughs> I wish to add all of them. Uh, I swear that this DC is getting higher, but not as long as I'm rolling ones and threes. <laughs> Um, so, um, you, like, Loyaris is, like, his attention is on you, and at first it looks like you're, it, you're, the two of you are going to have your own battle, and, uh, uh Vajra and Rowan are going to have their own, uh, but then you just shift your attention to Rowan, and he's no longer on your team. Uh, I just blow him up. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it, it's, uh, <laughs> it's pretty bad. Um, Best of luck to you in the future. <laughs> <laughs> I can talk about how badly you lost. <laughs> I'll, ta I'll take the second roll. <clears throat> oh my gosh. Okay. Um, there comes a moment when Rover, and as it's becoming increasingly clear that you're, you know, you're going to take advantage of the weakness in the opponent's uh, team. Um, he... he uh, uh, trying to uh, break his uh, your focus away from him um, when he casts the next spell with the, with his now out of tune loot uh, you're beginning to feel horribly horribly hot um, as uh, he he places heat metal upon your armor and that's really messing with your concentration um, mm. uh, this one this, this role at this time was a failure for you Nice. Um, and you are a frog who's being slowly boiled alive, and uh, unlike that uh, that uh, uh, that saying, uh, you are definitely noticing it. Uh, so I'll take. Oh I'll yeah, take third they say that frogs don't care. It's, it's, right? <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. Like yeah, if you just like frogs thing. don't it's, realize that they're boiling thing. until they just die. But you realize. You are realizing very much. But and it's against the bard? Well, um, it, it's still against the team. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, yep, I am... Uh, I think this is about the end of it for you. I, I, you did well to come this far in the tournament, but I have a statement to make. <laughs> we'll see what this is. <laughs> Uh-oh. And, uh... The statement is, uh, hold on, <laughs> uh, three, six, eight, ten. It's okay, Badra can pull through for us. Still not <laughs> a great look. Um, your, your, your mind goes back to the item that Tech had given you. Uh, and uh, in a <laughs> moment when, in a moment when you are like, about you're basically like surrounded uh with with vajra having like she's she she uh as she was being targeted by both of her opponents uh, she grabbed onto the legs of of the red beak and sort of like flew off for a moment to catch her breath and so you're the one uh attracting just all the heat here um and you think back to the help that Tekka has offered you know what, now might be the time. I know I just <laughs> gave a grandiose speech like I was going to do something amazing. And I am. Uh, and sure, he'll pull the frog stick and try to dart the bard. 
<laughs> I will never <laughs> dart the old elf. That is rude. <laughs> pull the frog stick and dart the bard. I pull the frog stick and a, dart the bard. That's just a great <laughs> sentence. <laughs> <laughs> so what this happens? Is, here this is now? your well. This is your advantage. Uh, this this tra mechanically speaking translates to advantage on your check, like like the assistance of all the other party members so far. But yeah, Teka, uh, go ahead and describe what, it, what the frog what the frog does. Yeah. So uh, when Pontifex pulls the fishing lure the, here, um, okay. Th here's a question, uh, DM. Mm -hmm. Do you think Mina would add sound effects to the wind-up frog? Absolutely. Great. Fantastic. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> when pulling the lure, the wind-up frog gets launched with high-pitched croak, <laughs> and it, just, it is just launched towards uh, your target, and uh, in its mouth, its mouth agape is the... Um, is a blow dart with, um, yeah, um, a solution of paralysis. Oh, jeez. Mm-hmm. So I guess, do I roll to see how well this works now? Or? Um, no, that's just going no? to be advantage on Pontifex's Got it. Uh, okay. check. Would, you know, just be my guest and roll this roll 20, uh, the d20, just to see how it is. It's, it's just d20 plus 8. <laughs> D twenty plus eight, okay. Yeah, okay. let's see. This is this is this thing, and then we'll see if I if I supplement it with spell slots. Got it. Hey, uh, <laughs> I can really use my inspiration for this. I'd be happy to do that. <laughs> yep. Let's do it. Go for it. Yes. Yes. No. <laughs> oh no. Our inspirations oh, so. haven't been good this session. <laughs> yeah, they haven't been. It uh, so the seventeen. Inspiration. Ah, uh, yeah, seventeen. Okay, yeah, I think he uh, he like blow dart or he, he frog darts the bard and like it doesn't just immediately solve the problem. It's like, <laughs> oh, good, you're holding still, and then like winds up some giant. I think he actually hits him with the wood blast, uh, and I'll blow uh, I'll blow a third level slot. To bump it up to 20. <laughs> just fireballing just the Just hold still and just... <laughs> <laughs> blast him with the giant... The... What's it? What did I describe it as? A croaking frogs in a megaphone? <laughs> it's like a fireworks thunder on the spot. Thunderball? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fireball with thunder damage. Okay. Um, the entire arena shakes. Um, everybody can feel the vibrations from this. Uh, poor Rowan uh, is blasted in the face with this thunder, thunderous fireball. Um, and <laughs> um, <laughs> let's Damn. just say that Talix, your service has started requesting and this time not for translating purposes uh there have been like healers running around after battles but like it, it seems like you could really lend a hand after this um as roweran's uh handsome face is badly in need of being patched <laughs> up after this round um with uh loyaros ultimately just conceding defeat before the same happens to him I'll use the third level heal. I wish you could know how close this roll was. I would actually love to know how close it was. It was two points off. Nice. I'll take that. I was rolling pretty hot. Until I didn't, and then Tekka saved me. <laughs> <laughs> and by um. that, I mean, thanks for reminding me I had that thing. <laughs> uh, okay. And, and, and thank you, Talix, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, for, for helping with Rowan. Um, mm. In the... In the break... Um, before the, uh, the final round, which is going to be Pontifex against the Vajra, 
Um, Pontifex, you are um, together with the rest of the party. Um, a a medic is pa patching up uh, uh, your your burns. You have to take off your armor for a little bit and just let it cool off. Um, you are approached by the governor, uh, who asks to just speak with you in private for a minute. Uh, yes, of course. And like, ah. Uh, takes you aside into like a different mm -hmm. area uh, and he he compliments you like it's a it's a bit of like small talk on how well you're doing and how excited everybody is and how the tournament is going well and asking you uh, if, if you're enjoying yourself but then like he quickly uh, pivots to saying so you you realize who you're up against right Uh, I don't particularly follow. Well, she is young and she is Ladarian. And our relationship with the Atarawa has just begun to mend. I believe it uh, would be wise if we were to use this uh, this tournament and the results of it uh, uh, to make sure that uh, uh, the, our relationship keeps flourishing instead of uh, taking steps back. Do you follow? Yes, of course. This makes complete sense. I couldn't agree more. Uh, good. I'm, I'm glad you agree. So can I, can I count on you to let her win? I'm sorry, what? <laughs> what do you mean, let her win? L if you let Vajra win, um, it's going to really help us out. And you're not missing out on anything. Uh, you, you still get your prize and uh, you are still our hero. This wouldn't change you that. And you made it to the finals, you have uh, proven yourself. Uh, no, I don't think you understand entirely all of the inner machinations that are going on with this tournament. Uh, whatever the prize I was going to win, I frankly don't care and intended on turning it down in a I grand could. theatrical fashion. If you don't care about the prize, then this is not going to be a problem for you. Right, right. You could use my prize as instead a gift to them to say, hey, no hard feelings that you lost so horribly. Uh <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I'm not going uh, to force you, but I do urge you to, to reconsider. She's... She's young. Uh, we should let the, the younger generations flourish. Uh, let her have oh, of this. of course. I've thought about it. It will be good for and her. I'd like it, it to for... ignore you. <laughs> no, I'm going to crush her in the grandest fashion that I can. <laughs> These young things, <laughs> they need a sort of check. The children <laughs> that are spectating, one in particular, needs to see what it is. This is not a, a story of the underdog. This is a story when the hero of, 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 the, of the, the town who is expected to win crushes his opposition. <laughs> And everyone who thought this was going to be some kind of, I don't know, uh, uh, storybook ending is brought back to reality. The reality <laughs> where I blow her to smithereens. <laughs> All that I ask of you, uh, great governor, is to make sure that Shalira Aradova doesn't blink. Can I trust you to do this for me? Uh, the 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 governor uh, sighs and simply says, "Well, uh, 
You have proven yourself, uh, uh, Pontifex. Oh yes, Go I ahead. proved myself before whenever the lady tried to pirate my boat. <laughs> Just finish what you started, I suppose. Oh, I intend to. I, I trust that you know what you're doing. Yeah, I mean, I'm figuring it out as I go. If um, I'm being honest, those two giant thunder croak balls are brand new. I've never actually done that before. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah, no, he just... Uh, defeated, but not insisting any further. Um, he, he's going to leave you alone. Oh, hey, Governor, one more thing yeah. before you leave. Remember... Chalera doesn't blink. Good man. And yeah, gives him a firm pat on the back. I'll, I'll make sure she doesn't take a toilet break. Not a one. <laughs> okay. Uh, anything that the party needs to do or say before the final round? Alex wants to talk to Vatra. Uh, you, you absolutely have a chance to. How are you feeling? Tired. Yeah. Are you nervous? I never feel nervous. She visibly lies. I, uh... I knew the professor was very competitive and very driven, but, uh... I think this tournament's brought out a sort of new side of him. <laughs> uh, I don't suppose you saw what he did to the bard. I saw. Look, just... I want you to be safe out there, okay? Whatever happens, good or bad, uh, I'll be here. I'll make sure you won't get hurt. Are you worried about me? Just be safe and I wish you good luck, okay? I'm going to kick his ass. If you'd like, I could, uh... Give you a... Small blessing. From... My god. From back home. This... As a token of goodwill. I, I look at it, I don't get a lot of these these things, these these uh, puzzles or whatever, but this is a fight and that's what I'm good at. I don't need any help. And then she looks like to the left and to the right and making sure that you're that, that the two of you are like alone and out of your shot of everyone else, she says, Okay, maybe don't tell anyone. It's just a small boon of good fortune. And after seeing everything you can do, I think maybe our gods might have more in common than I thought. I'd love to, well, I'd love to talk more about it later. But for now, I hope that this, that you'll receive this well. And I will just cast Bless. That's it. Okay. An extra 1d4 for her. Mm hmm You feel maybe a little better? I... feel ashamed. Ugh. Icky. Oh. And there's that smell of that liquid from before that's still sticking to my hair. Oh, well, uh, here, you can take some of this. I'll give her some of Tekka's perfume again. <laughs> <laughs> the, the ultimately two final contestants are both going to smell very similar. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and then, so Pontifex and Badger both step into the arena for, for the final duel. Uh, the, the crowd seems excited. And also, um, 
I'm going to take another insight check uh, just from uh, uh, just from the three that are watching from the crowd, Subip and uh, Brooke and Tekka. Whoops. Uh, Brooke eh? today is the very perceptive one. Uh, very in terms of catching, like, getting, oh, wait, like, a who's... feel. Am I supposed to roll a perception nope. check? No, 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 not you. Okay. Uh, just uh, the three of them uh, in sight. All right. You're all the insight, right? Uh, Did I say <clears throat> perception? I mean, both are plus four for me. Okay, so. okay. Um, as uh, you you've been having this feeling in the back of your mind, Brooke, and in the in, in these last few rounds, you've started to kind of kind of really like think that. Uh, Vajra shouldn't have come this far, uh, particularly considering the, the, strength of, the strength of those who did. Um, and it, it, it's really been feeling like a lot of our opponents haven't tried too hard to take her down. Um, and it seems like there is other people in the crowd that kind of um, have the same opinion where it's like they know that in this final round Pontifex is the strongest one, but they also expect Vajra to win. Um, they seem to have this like understanding that ultimately the, the winner of the tournament isn't the, uh, isn't the best spellcaster, but uh, it's more sort of like a, a political move of sorts. Uh, but you know Pontifex. And you don't think that uh, uh, it's going to be that easy for Vajra. Would the crowd seem nervous about that? Or just expectingly? Uh, it seems like they have already accepted that they know um, the, the result of this tournament. They don't seem nervous. Hmm. Then I will probably just lower my voice and tell it to the two. Uh, something is definitely weird in the atmosphere here, so just be ready in case Pontifex wins. That nothing goes down, or uh, that something can go down. Pip puts the finishing touches on his newly fashioned voodoo doll and says, <laughs> Don't worry, I'm ready. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Also, keep an eye out. That is a good practice to see where to read people. Okay. Uh, Pontifex, uh, you face off against this kid who once swore that uh, uh, she would never accept uh, your people, people of Plurna, on her continent, uh, um, whose hatred for uh, you, not specifically you, but and not specifically your party, but uh, everyone who isn't from Ladaria, uh, it once felt so uh, deep and uh, really difficult to ever uproot. Uh, and now you're now she's here and you know that this wasn't her idea that their, that a grandpa uh brought her here to do this um and you know what's at stake uh for her and for her people and uh, more importantly for yourself <laughs> um so i'll i'll take your role and i imagine you're not holding back uh, yeah i don't imagine there's a world in which the professor lets this go. Okay. Ooh. Unless they're... Oh no. Okay, I will let her have a little bit of a lead. <laughs> I have to butter up the crowd. <laughs> Badra begins uh, the battle uh, by singing one of her spells. Um, 
and as her voice echoes out, you you hear it over and over echoing across the arena, and then you realize it's not an echo that you're hearing. You are literally hearing her voice multiple times. Um, as there's more than one of her uh, visible, and even more than one of the red beak that was with her. Um, and each of them begins to, to attack with uh, weaker, smaller spells, cantrips, uh, but they're all coming from all these different directions and you don't know who to target first. And you figure, uh, usually, uh, these, are, these would all be illusions and only one is real, but they're all hurting you. Um, the the uh, beginning of the fight uh, uh, seems to be in her favor, and the pawn to vex it does. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Brooke, it does appear that this is kind of what the crowd expected. Ah, I'll take your second roll, Pontifex. Please, in that 20. Oh, no! Ooh, he lost! <laughs> <laughs> You're so humble, Professor! So oh, humble! God. I can't believe you threw the game for her, after all. What is so strange about Vajra is that, like, you've been... The tournament has been going on the entire day, and, like, the sun is about to set. And yet, somehow, she seems to have more magic in reserve than you do. Uh, and, of course, you have your little tricks to recover a little bit of, of energy, but... Um, it seems like in between rounds, she's always back to being, like fully uh, fresh and, and, and ready to go. And may, it, it may not be her her mastery of the battlefield or superior just fighting skills. Um, it's just the fact that she seems to have more energy than you. Maybe maybe it's a fact that she's so much younger than you, but that's what gives her the edge uh, in this battle. Whenever you cast a spell, she turns it back against you. And whenever you do manage to hit her, it's... It seems we have just dispelled one of uh, uh, the uh, fake images of herself. Um, and although you're not trying to let her win, uh, she just genuinely gets the upper hand. I'll take your third and final roll. Okay. Is it the final? Is it? Well, sorry, what do you say, Matt? <laughs> Please go. Okay. okay, time to make a spec. Uh, <laughs> screw it. I'm gonna dump everything I have. Why not? Uh, three, five, seven, plus seven. Twenty-nine. <laughs> okay. Um... With the knowledge and the freedom uh, of, of knowing that uh, uh, this is it. Um, you don't have to conserve any more of your energy. Um, you throw everything you have at her. Um, and uh, just trying to overwhelm her uh, with the superior strength of your own spells. Um, and she does begin to falter, and she does begin to take steps back, and you finally are beginning to actually hurt her. Um, there comes a moment where the red beak that's with her um, flies away towards the edge of, of the arena, and like out of it, uh, effectively just effectively withdrawing from the fight. Uh, and she's no longer able to reach you um, from a safe distance with uh, spells that otherwise wouldn't get to you uh, through, through her companion bird. Uh, with two failures and a success, uh, even though you, you began to get the upper hand once again towards the second half of the battle, um, ultimately you tire out before she does. Um, her... <clears throat> Her uh, final spell involves. Uh, uh, it uh, it feels familiar in the sense that you've known spells that can that can do this, but uh, you haven't seen it cast in this manner, uh, where you feel the uh, you see it is these this grass growing from the ground once again, uh, and uh, reaching up 
and towards your body, uh, these long vines uh, holding you down and preventing you from casting any further spells as your hands are now locked. Um, and uh, uh, that's the moment when she uh, walks up to you uh, and she crosses her arms and uh, she says something to you that unfortunately you don't know what it means but uh, um, you can roll an insight check and it's a pretty easy one a pretty easy one <laughs> oh my gosh what's happening to me <laughs> um, you're not really sure what she just told you uh, so how do you react to that uh, like he he has been fully defeated, correct? Uh yeah. Uh I think he just like kind of like sits there for a second and like doesn't react and then just like bursts out into into a really jolly like Santa laughter. <laughs> uh it looks like you have overcome everything in front of you. Well done. You fully deserve everything that you get. Um you don't really know why, but that seems like laughter was not what she wanted out of you and she puffs out <laughs> her cheeks very annoyedly at this. Um Um And then and then she just turns her back on you. And like waves at a crowd, um, and the battle uh, has ended in her favor. Uh, you can you can see that the the reaction is kind of mild. Um, it doesn't seem like it, it looks like the the majority of the crowd is not surprised at this. Uh, Talix, you rush in along with the other doctors just to. Uh, Tend to their wounds. Um, as Vajra is the, declared the winner of the Rodova spellcasting tournament, then Pontifex, you're freed from the vines. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he'll, uh, he'll like, kind of stand up and, like, you know, adjust his wrists or whatever, like, feel around where they were and, like, pick up his, uh, his little gold astrolabe thing off the ground and. He's gonna give. He's gonna give like a glance towards. Uh, not even really a glance. He's just gonna like straight up look at uh, to Shalira, and then just give her like a big, like happy, closed-eyed, wide smile. She looked happy until you smiled at her, and her expression just drops. <clears throat> uh, He'll give her one of those little Queen of England waves. <laughs> <laughs> And make his way off the, like, dust off his robes or whatever and um, make his way off the field. Yeah, it definitely looks like that's not the, uh, the reaction she wanted to see out of you. Um, you know her well enough that she wanted to see you defeated and, and destroyed and ashamed. Um, and to, to, to be not happy, to be not smiling above all else. Um, <laughs> and... The worst possible thing that you could have done to her was to smile at her after your defeat. And you feel like that probably stings more than you winning. Um, okay. All is well in the world. <laughs> uh, prizes are uh, given out to uh, the, the top four contestants. Um, Roran seems... Uh, uh, particularly overjoyed to be getting a small uh, sum of, of money. Uh, he, as he like, just m mentions vaguely um, to n not like to the crowd when he's actually given the, the reward, but back when he's like in, in the inside room of the arena that he, he really needed. He really needed it. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Uh, uh, Pontifex, you are called out to, uh, to receive the, the second prize. Sure. Uh, well, let me put this one back. Yeah, sure. Why not? Um, 
You are given a uh, hundred gold pieces and uh, a staff. A hundred um, gold pieces and a staff. <clears throat> yeah, the uh, the the staff has that kind of like classic wizard staff look uh, to it, but also simultaneously it just looks very expensive and, and it seems to have been uh, very well crafted. Um, the the bottom half of the handle is made of wood and the top half is made of uh, this steely metal and there is four gemstones uh, that are placed uh, into uh, the, the metal end of it um, that uh, go in, in a color sequence of red, orange, yellow and white. Uh, white is the one at the, at the top. Uh, Um, I'll, I'll tell you what it does later, but uh, sure. uh, when uh, when Baryanthar hands it over to you, <clears throat> he he leans over uh, to you and uh, and says, "I hope that this will keep you safe uh, in your travels. You're going to do a lot of good for the world. I know you will." Yeah, I intend to. The the okay. governor shakes her hand and oh sorry were you going to say something else? Uh, no go ahead. The governor shakes her hand and then like uh, he also leans over to whisper something and he just thanks you for letting Vajra win. <laughs> he gives him a big smile. Oh no worries as I said I intended to give away for Spras. <laughs> um. It is everyone's fault but my own in his head. <laughs> It's a dice fault. It's everyone's fault but mine. <laughs> um, Vajra is given a bigger sum of money and this, uh, um, this wand that she doesn't really seem to know what to do with. Um, and Talix says you're translating for her. She, she, she asks you uh, what she is supposed to do with this toothpick. Well, I know you've got enchanted items here. We've seen some. There's magic in it. There is? I don't hear it. She, like, puts it, puts it up to her ears. Well, maybe it's a little different from the magic you're used to. Okay, well, whatever. I accept this offering. Uh, and you and you translate to Barinthar mm -hmm. and to 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 yes. uh, to the governor that uh, she's content. Uh, and thus the tournament comes to an end. Does can I call the session or is there something uh, uh, special that you were gonna like? I know you had something planned if you won. Uh, are you doing something instead? Uh, no, I think, um, I think that, like, despite the, the recent dragon happenings and the, uh, the whole, like, I guess just depression involved in that, and then him just not really being that enthusiastic about the tournament, and then the whole thing with, uh, the vinegar and just the bad attitude and all that stuff, uh, and then this this kind of happening i feel like he has just just like a big wave of relief come over like all these expectations that he was supposed to live up to just uh like he fell short and nothing bad happened uh so i guess it, it just that big relief like the 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 weight of the world is off of his shoulder um and i think like just in the in the positivity just the good vibes that he's like kind of giving off uh i think like the little <laughs> the tressum just like appears on his shoulder <laughs> oh uh and i think he doesn't even like he doesn't even bl he just like you know reaches up and, and like scratches the tressum and like continues to kind of walk off on his thing with his new staff <laughs> Uh, the tressim is covered in mud. She has twigs in her fur and dried leaves. Um, 
and, and some of her fur is a little matted. Um, it looks like she's been through a lot. Um, <laughs> and like when she when she appears uh, on on your shoulder, um, your 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 good vibes are temporarily interrupted by this sense of resentment that you feel coming from her and you, that you uh, your your connection with her that is now established and clear um, it's it's conveying her emotions to you you almost feel them like they are your own um, and you feel that uh, um, you feel that she feels uh, um, unhappy with you uh, but then the opposite happens, where she seems to be the one who's experiencing what you're experiencing. Uh, and whatever problem she seemed to have with you, she seems to forgive you. And she leans uh, into your hand as you're patting your head. Oh. And that's where we're going to call the session. Thank Aww. you. Um, yay. Very cute. The real prize were the friends you made along the way. And this cool staff. <laughs> <laughs> whatever this is, cool. <laughs> oh yeah, thank you. No, so I was going to give away the prize and whatever. I was feeling poetic at the time, and then I lost. <laughs> <laughs> so I changed my mind. <laughs> no, oh, really whenever knows. Pontifex is down, give him a new staff. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you magic understand. items always make people happy. It is a good time. Okay. It is now in your equipment. Thank you everyone for being here. Um, mm -hmm. I Thanks hope for... that we can now do this like weekly. Not on weekends, in a weekday, but... Hopefully things yeah. get a little smoother from now on. Are um, we still um, thinking Thursdays? Uh, it, it is never going to be the same day. Um, it works could for me be next any. Week. Hmm? Thursday works for me next week, I believe. Oh, there you go. Next week it can sure. be Thursday. Okay, cool. Uh, but yeah, in general, we'll always have to, like, week by week, find out uh, if we have a day mm -hmm. we can play. Okay, um, cool. It's always I mean, a non if, if Thursday's day. Thursday's the only day that works. Like, have it on a Thursday, whether I'm there or not. Like, permanent? Yeah, okay, I mean, we'll figure it out. I didn't know if okay. we were going to, uh, to, like, kind of lock in another day, or if we're still in this, like, nebulous area. Jason is in a nebulous area. Um, yeah, I get that. If, uh, uh, we'll, so we'll find what it works. It's no longer storming. Look at that. It's wow. Like, you know, Magical. like the weather clears when <laughs> the Carters feel better in the story. Maybe that, that maybe the, <laughs> you know, all the, the negativity has gone. Calm emotions did work. It just took a while. It just took some time. <laughs> But yeah, uh, thank you very much for being here, and uh, uh, welcome to the next arc of Outlander's Guide to Lidaria. Oh, oh. Uh, what's it called? Oh, <laughs> oh god, I need titles? Oh no! Uh, I'll this think is of something. The West Arc. <laughs> the, the, the Forbidden West? Uh, sure. Mm, I feel like there's some copyright going on there. <laughs> <laughs> By people bigger than us. <laughs> but yeah, um, sorry for keeping you long longer than usual, uh, and uh, You're I good, am excited. it was worth it. Yay! Uh, I'm excited yeah, for cool. what's to come. Cool. Woo. <laughs> thank you for the session. Yeah, hey, thank you for being here. Uh, yeah, I'll see you guys next week. Bye! 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 Bye. Bye. Bye.